Order at 3.01 p.m. on June 8th, 2021. Uh, Commissioner Brian Welch will introduce uh, the pastor providing the invocation for today. Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is my pleasure. Welcome, everybody, today. Um, I want to introduce Pastor Dean and Sarah to deliver our invocation today. A lot of you probably know who Pastor and Sarah is. He is a, uh, I like to think of him as a local celebrity. He's a very, he has a thriving sports Twitter, okay? If you're interested in anything sports locally, he's got some great takes on sports. He is the pastor of City Church here in Tallahassee. How many locations you got, Dean? Because uh, of COVID one. Okay, because of COVID one, sorry. <laughs> I know at a time it was, we're, we're coming too back. Too soon, too soon. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, and City Church is a thriving and vibrant church here in the community, and it is a privilege for me to invite Dean to give us our invocation. Thank you, Icon. It's a privilege to be here. Let's pray together. Father, I offer this prayer not as a formality or a tradition, but as an act of dependence upon you uh, for wisdom and for guidance that I ask be a reality for the commissioners here at this table and the people in this room. We are thankful people, a grateful people, for being able to live in such a great place. And I thank you for those you've appointed uh, through our election process to serve this community, this county, these people. Lord, please give them wisdom. Please let them be people of truth, of grace, of peace. And allow the things in here that take place, the conversations, the debates, the charge discussions, whatever it might be, all be for the betterment of our community. Let us be unselfish people who want to see the lives of our neighbors flourish. So I ask you to be in this place that you guide these commissioners today. I thank you for them. Please bless their families and protect them and guide them. And we ask this all in your name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor and Sarah. Commissioner Welch, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Commissioner Welch. Commissioners, we are now at awards and presentations. Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the first item? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first <coughs> item on the agenda under awards and presentations tonight, you'll hear a public safety update uh, from Sheriff Walt McNeil. Sheriff, welcome. Thank you, Vince. And thank you, uh, commissioners. Let me first say, uh, before I begin my remarks here, uh, how appreciative I am, and I know the citizens of Leon County as well, of the tremendous job you all did during the height of the pandemic. Uh, this body uh, was in a leadership role and did uh, what I thought was just outstanding work. And I, I know it's kind of uh, late in the day to give you those thanks, but. Quite honestly, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to see you all together. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you uh, understood how much I appreciate the work you do. Uh, this afternoon, I want to do uh, a couple of things. Just sort of bring you up to speed on uh, the state of the state, if you will, as it relates to our law enforcement community. I, I think you all received copies of our 2020 annual report. In that report, you saw that our crime has consistently gone down over the last four years, double-digit numbers, uh, about 35 percent over a four-year period of time. And what I want to do now is to talk about where we're going and how we're going forward. Those are good numbers, but I continue to say that those numbers are perhaps not sustainable unless we do some proactive things on the front end. <coughs> now, <coughs> snapshot right now, January through May, uh, just to let you know, and I don't have all the numbers from the Tallahassee Police Department, so don't take these numbers to be uh, gospel. Uh, but right now, uh, burglaries are trending down by some 27 percent. Larcenies are trending down by about 6 percent. And motor vehicle thefts are decreasing by about 3 percent. The uh, UCR uh, violent crime statistics tell us that murder uh, although we've seen some of those, they are still trending down about about 33 percent. Rapes are down by 37 percent. And robberies, quite honestly, remain about the same compared to January, May this year, compared to January, May of last year. You all perhaps know that we embarked upon what I thought was a uh, very comprehensive uh, way of trying to deal with the crime problems we see in in Leon County. 
We fortified ourselves in the Leon County Sheriff's Office with our focus on a specialization of units, a spider unit as we call them. The spider unit uh, during that period of time has been very active. Some over 200 arrests made, uh, 147 warrants issued, uh, stolen vehicles recovered, something like 34, and narcotics, uh, that, that number's just huge. And the guns we've taken off the street to date is about 23. We also have something we call Deputies Without Borders. I hope you are very familiar with that. What that does is we bring in the Florida Highway Patrol, Wakulla County, uh, Gadsden County, and Tallahassee Police, of course. What we realize is that uh, crime knows no borders. And quite honestly, most of our, I shouldn't say most, many of our crime uh, perpetrators uh, come from Gaston County, particularly, and from Wakulla County, but particularly from uh, the borders of Georgia. We realize that uh, those borders are very porous in that some of the Georgia sheriff's agencies are like five, six person agencies and the drugs flow into Leon County from those holes that we have in our system. So we've focused quite a bit of our resources on trying to make sure we, we do something about uh, those drug corridors. Uh, we've made a number of arrests. Uh, just recently, May 21st through the 23rd, we made 16 arrests using the Deputies Without Borders. Uh, we've got two guns off the streets and uh, marijuana and methamphetamines. Now, one of the things we continue to talk about is that we're not simply focused on arresting folks. Uh, we realize that uh, we have to do more than that, and that's why we coined our initiative All In. And All In basically means that we are working with all of our partners, social service organizations, <coughs> state, county, everybody, city, all working together with one plan in terms of how we deal effectively with crime. To that extent, we focused on our youth problems in Leon County, realizing that there are some traumatic events that take place in the lives of our kids. One of the things we focused on is domestic violence. We know anecdotally uh, that kids who are in homes that, that uh, there's domestic violence taking place, they are traumatized in many instances. And that trauma results in lashing out, uh, getting involved in crimes, committing crimes, and then getting into our system. So we have embarked upon a number of initiatives. Uh, one, uh, focused on identifying who those youth are. Uh, when we go to a home, our deputies are directed to make sure we get the information about that child and then have a handoff to our school system. So if the school can then start working with their counselors, social workers, to have those interventions with the children. We also, uh, when we find those circumstances with our kids, uh, we then try to contact the parents. We try to do that in several ways. One, I send a letter, personal letter out to the parents saying, uh, not necessarily in domestic violence cases, but crimes that are committed by kids. I send those letters out to the parents and saying, look, we've got a number of initiatives we've got going on. We'd like for your child to be involved in these. And we've gotten something, some fairly successful uh, feedback. Not, it's not 100%. But we're getting something on the magnitude of about 20% feedback from the parents who would like to partake in our programs. We have a program called Worship With Me. We have Back on Track, which is basically an interaction between our deputies and those kids who are in trouble. What I'm most uh, proud of is recently we partnered with Boy Scouts of America. We have, uh, we've, we're standing up a Boy Scout uh, uh, camp or Boy Scout house, what do you call that? I wasn't in scouting, sorry. <laughs> forget what that's called. But we were standing up one in uh, the Bond community and one in Griffin Heights. And we believe at this point there should be about 60 kids uh, that are now going to be in scouting because of the efforts we're putting together in the Leon County Sheriff's Office. Now, the other aspect of what we're trying to do, uh, and you perhaps see this on the news more than you see anything else, and that is murders. Uh, what I asked our staff to do is to Let's sit down and go back over the years here in Leon County and let's, let's analyze the murders and the types of murders we've had in our community. And let's see what, what correlations there are between victim, suspect, area of location, job, background, all that. And we are engaged in that process right now, trying to figure out exactly how do we then, when we get all this data, do the research on it, and how do we use that data to prevent those murders and shootings to take place in our community. That's an ongoing process that we have 
and hopefully you'll hear more about that uh, as time goes on. Uh, another thing I want to talk about as it relates to those murders and shootings take place, that take place in our community is the 1,000 Jobs Initiative we kicked off with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, both, uh, both, all three chambers uh, have been agreed to work with us in terms of finding jobs for kids in our community. We're working with Career Source, and I can tell you to date, uh, we are extremely satisfied with the uh, efforts going forward. We've got uh, a number of business in Marpan. We've got a meat packing plant uh, in Madison County that's on board with us, and we're getting kids into those job situations. And not only kids, uh, but through our detention facility, we're doing the same thing with adults. So we're very uh, uh, optimistic about that 1,000 jobs initiative as we go forward. The uh, next set of things I want to talk about uh, have to do with the uh, detention facility. Uh, some of you may call it the jail. Uh, we have, uh, for the last four years, we have focused on the reality that uh, persons that commit crimes in our community, about 90% of those persons that commit crimes uh, here locally, they're going to go in our facility and come right back out. I can never, uh, it always echoes in my mind, uh, going back uh, 10, 20 years, I would always hear former Sheriff uh, Campbell say that he has the biggest hotel in town and that his uh, uh, drugs, the, the psychotropic drugs, the cost is astronomical and we should be working to do something about that. So we have taken that on as a real challenge to try to figure out exactly how do we create an environment where we have a reentry program that seeks to find people where they are, find out what their problems are, and then try to link them up uh, as they return to our communities. We've created a number of initiatives uh, to try to deal with that. And you perhaps know I want to thank the the Commission again and the Health Department. I saw Claudia in the back. Uh, the Health Department has allowed us to utilize uh, their building next door to the Sheriff's Office. We've created what we call the RISE Center. It is our reentry uh, portal. And so what we try to do is identify those persons who come into our detention facilities that have various problems, mental health issues, uh, drug issues, whatever they may be. And we're partnering with, uh, well, we got a contract that we're going to put on the street pretty shortly. We're going to try to make sure that we have a seamless system by which we treat the persons when they come into our detention facility and we make sure that they get the, uh, if it's drug treatment, whatever it is they need, we do that while they incarcerate it with us. But the handoff in the past has been somewhat uh, disjointed. What we're trying to do now is to make sure there's a smooth handoff. For example, it used to be that we would give you seven days of, of your drugs that you're on, the medication that you're on when you leave the facility. We're increasing that from seven days to 30 days. We're working with our partners, uh, uh, trying to make sure the mental health providers can then pick that up and continue it as we try to work through the dynamics and the, of the situations that person has in his, his or her private life. So we're really excited about that. We have another initiative we call the uh, VEER. It's called Vocational Education Enabling Reform. Really excited about the prospects of this initiative. And what we do here is try to match those persons that have, as they come into our facility, uh, we get them in these training programs uh, that try to make sure that uh, while they're there, if it's milk welding, for example, uh, we try to make sure we get them where they can, they spend their time in our detention facility at night, but go out to that job during the day and come back. And the same thing on weekends. Trying to make sure that we don't interrupt that person's ability to make a, a living wage because we understand that once that living wage is impacted, then the, the hole gets bigger, deeper, and the person can't find their way out. The last thing I want to talk about is the mental health component that we're building. I talked about the, uh, uh, the reentry piece of the person coming into our facility and then going back into the community. What we have to do and what we've been working on trying to do is to make sure uh, that we have a partner on the outside uh, that works with our provider, Horizon, on the inside in a seamless way that the mental health process, what, whatever treatments are taking place on the inside, they are carried on on the outside by, the, by that provider. That is a very intense process, and we're in the process right now. We have a, 
uh, a grant. Uh, we're looking to get a grant to help us fund that, that, that process and hopefully get that done here in the short term. The last thing I want to talk about is one thing that's in your budget, uh, the budget that I have that you all so graciously, I hope, will, will give me uh, going forth, and that is uh, a three cl clinicians who are uh, trained to deal with mental health issues, paired with three of our deputies who will be in the community, specifically focused on mental health issues, responding to situations where people uh, are in need of being Baker acted, uh, situations where there are emotional disturbed uh, persons, persons who are suicidal, uh, mental health related welfare checks, uh, that is, we get this all the time, person's not taking their meds, uh, the parents are or the uh, adult in the house or the husband or wife calls and says, can you come into a welfare check? I'm sh something's going, something's not right here. Usually we send a police officer or a deputy there, and usually we have uh, negative outcomes of those kind of encounters. So we hope to change the dynamics as it relates to those responses. And hopefully through this funding process we've asked you for, uh, we will be able to put that program into action. Uh, I could go on and on, uh, but let me just simply say, uh, commissioners, again, uh, thank you for uh, your support of what we're doing at Leon County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we certainly believe that it's going to continue to require the kind of collaboration that we've seen, not only with uh, this, this body, but with the city of Tallahassee and our, our, our uh, business community to make this work. And I am really uh, excited and buoyed up uh, by the responses that we got from all the chambers in town. In fact, uh, we hope to make a presentation over in, uh, in I guess, Jacksonville or, uh, or where if the chamber is meeting. Uh, Amelia Island, is that where it is? Uh, and we will make a, a presentation there and talk about the very same things we're talking about here. So thank you very much for hearing. I just want to give you a, a, an idea of where we are and where we're going. And th through your support, I think we'll get there. Any questions? Sheriff, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Um, I know we've got some uh, county commissioners that want to do, provide some remarks. Uh, let me go ahead and, and, and uh, have the county administrator say a few words. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Just very quickly, while we've got the sheriff here, just couldn't miss the opportunity, and especially since he's got members of, the, of his command staff with him. Uh, just on behalf of staff, uh, Sheriff, we just appreciate so much the level of cooperation uh, and communication that we all enjoy to the benefit of both organizations and, and ultimately to the citizens. We appreciate it all the time, but especially this time of year during the budget time. So we really appreciate it. I know Alan is smiling over there, which is a, a rare thing, but we really do appreciate your team. It's a real unique thing that we have uh, here with LCSO in the county, and, and uh, it's always appreciated. So, again, uh, Sheriff, thank you very much. Thank you, Vince. And I, I was remiss. Let me introduce my, uh, my team here. Up front here is Ron Cave, uh, Assistant Sheriff for uh, Administration. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Harrelson, the Assistant Sheriff for Detention Services, and Percy Griffin, the Assistant Sheriff for Law Enforcement Services. Great. Sheriff, thank you so much. I couldn't agree with the County Administrator more. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have that strong partnership between, between us, the County staff, and, and your office, sir. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing to keep us safe. I've um, got a number of commissioners that would like to say a few words. I've got Commissioner Maddox first, then Commissioners Welch, Dozier, and Vice Chair Proctor. Commissioner Maddox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Sheriff, thank you so much for the work you did. Those numbers that you gave and the decreases that we have is pretty amazing. I, I, I attribute that to your initiatives that you that you mentioned to us during your presentation. Uh, very thoughtful, uh, very succinct, very effective by the numbers that you've given. One thing I noticed that during your presentation that there was a lot, awful lot of talk of, of mental health. Um, <clears throat> the, the question that I have, and I, I already know the answer, but I think... It needs to be placed on the record. Um, mental health is not your primary job as sheriff of Leon County, correct? No, sir, it's not. But about how much of the work that you guys do deal with mental health versus the other side of, 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 of what you do, would you say? You well, prepared? we know that 40% of the persons in our detention facilities suffer from some level of mental health. So. That's close to 50% of what we do in a detention facility. We can't measure that on the outside right. in terms of the calls we respond to, uh, but it's significant. Uh, right. So, so that 40% to 50% is almost 50% articulates exactly what I'm about to say in that um, I, I appreciate the fact of 
you accepting the challenge because it's what you deal with, but it's not what you're tasked with dealing with. I think that we need to have a deeper conversation about how we uh, decrease that number and create situations where those folks who are uh, in a mental health situation are able to, to get the help that they need. I like the fact that the training that you're moving into, I, I, I actually went through a situation recently where I had a constituent call me about a Baker Act thing that happened, um, but it's like you said, when those calls happen, most times you send a deputy, but wouldn't it be great if you sent a mental health professional there? You know, what, where's the balance there in trying to do that? Um, how much help would you like from us in, in kind of balancing it out for you? If you have any ideas of how we do that, I, I love to hear it. And I, no, no, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the fact of you doing it. I, I really do. Because if you think about it, where are the mental health facilities that were 20, 30 years ago that, that people were able to go to? We just don't have that number uh, of, of beds and facilities here. But there's still got to be a way to kind of try to balance and move in the direction of allowing you to decrease that 40% to 25, 30, you know? What does that, what does that look like? Well, we, I, I don't know, but I, I will tell you that uh, I'm ready to give up the job any day of the week. <laughs> uh, I, I will say that, uh, Commissioner, uh, based on the uh, projects that we're putting in the field uh, here shortly, we should have some idea of uh, what that impact can be if we do things the right way. Sure. I love the fact we're working with uh, Claudia and the health department. Uh, we believe that you know, it's going to take time. We didn't get here overnight. So we will, uh, and my team knows that I do a lot of research, and before I give you an answer, we're going to research it and make sure. Thank you. And hopefully we can come back to you with a proposal on how we can do that. Great. I can't wait to see it. Last thing I'll say is that Thousand Jobs Initiative is absolutely amazing. That's, that's, that's good stuff. I think the one thing that, that people miss, and you have to be in the environment, grow up in the environment to understand, is that a lot of times those, those people who uh, are, are committing those crimes are simply trying to feed their families or, 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 or better trying to create a situation where, where a kid can go to school and not be hungry or provide some kind of income for their family. And so uh, the Thousand Jobs Initiative is, is, is moving down in the right direction of, of even reducing the recidivism rate that you, that you talked about. But I think we as a community have to understand that and, and, and accept the fact that we have to balance that the, the, our, our, we, have to, we have to find a way to balance the way we, we see our business climate with the way we're thinking about growing as a community. Uh, I think we, we're very sensitive, very sensitive to making sure that, that we protect our environment. I think that's absolutely the thing that we should be doing. But in the way of doing it, I think we need to be just as sensitive as to how, um, the, the, the measurement between uh, protecting a tree versus protecting uh, a young life that needs to be nurtured and a job needs to be had by a parent. And so I'm not saying one is more important than the other, but I'll let you think about how that, how that, how that goes. I do believe, though, that, that, that there is a balance that can be achieved. There's a reason that we have an urban services area that's made specifically for us to have that, that type of growth and that type of development, that type of uh, uh, business climate so that we can build the things that we want, that we need to build to create the jobs that, that can pay folks the, the wage that they can actually survive and make a good living wage so the parents can feed their children and much, much more than that, feed themselves and nurture themselves and make a living that, that creates pride in what they do and, and not just feel like they're being given a check. And so, Sheriff, I appreciate the Thousand Jobs Initiative. I love to hear your ideas. And when you come back on, on the mental health piece, I do want you to be able to do uh, what we what we charge you to do, but I, I also appreciate you taking on the extra task um, because it's given to you of dealing with the mental health population within Leon County. That's forty percent of your of your population in your jail. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Maddox. We've got Commissioner Welch, Commissioner Dozier, and then Vice Chair Proctor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Sheriff, I wanted to say thank you to you and your command staff and your deputies, um, your administrative staff, your whole team. I think you guys do a tremendous job. I think it's important to acknowledge in a public forum that being a police officer or being law enforcement in, in this day and age is extremely difficult. And we, we tend as a community to want to blame law enforcement for all of the, or solving all the problems when we don't really recognize that it's intertwined with economic development and educational segregation and, and mental health issues and all these other things. And, and, uh, law enforcement officers and your partners at the T at TPD are always kind of on the front end of those issues. 
And I just wanted to commend you and thank you and your staff for all the work you're doing to reduce our crime rates, to, to improve our community. I think you're doing a tremendous job. Secondly, I wanted to brag on a couple of your deputies. Number one, I'm a school teacher at Childs High School, and uh, our, our, our school resource officer is a, a prince of a man, Paul Emmons, who I'm sure you know. Yes, I know Paul. Uh, I got to brag on him, one of my, one of my good buddies. And uh, secondly, uh, we just started in my neighborhood a, a neighborhood watch program with the sheriff's office. And yesterday I was, I was leaving at, at 7 a.m. as the sun was kind of coming up and in front of me was a deputy and he was going down the road and, he, and, and across the street walked about 16 little baby turkeys. <laughs> and that deputy just stopped and waited the three minutes for those little turkeys to cross the road with their mama hens and I sat right behind them and I thought, well, I might be late to school, but for a good cause, right? So thank you, thank your staff, thank your whole team for all you're doing. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate that. Mr. Welch. Yeah, Edmund, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. <laughs> Mr. Welch, well said, sir. Uh, there's, a, there's a children's book about that. that uh, <laughs> Make way for the ducklings, I think it is, right? Um, Commissioner Dozier, Vice Chair Proctor, and then Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, thank you, Chair, for being here and for your command staff as well. Um, I would be repetitive if I give thanks for all of the good work you all do for our community, but it has to be said and it should be said often. And I appreciate your comments um, at the beginning. I know you all have worked closely with our staff since the beginning of the pandemic, as we do in every emergency. But this year has been taxing for everyone in the first responders community, and we appreciate um, the collaboration and working together. So I think everything you said to the county administrator about his staff, um, we could, you know, say the same for LCSO. So thank you for that. Um, picking up on uh, where my colleagues were uh, focused on, and particularly Commissioner Maddox, the questions you had about uh, mental health, I was reminded of some comments you made during the discussion about the Children's Service Council and looking at third grade leaving, reading levels and some of the statistics um, that are unfortunate devastating predictors for um, maybe having issues with law enforcement later in life. And it occurs to me that the answer, part of the answer to your question, Commissioner Maddox, might be a lot of things we're doing on the front end to create jobs, as you said, the Children's Service Council, other programs like that. But this is taking the long view. It's going to take a long time to address these issues so the programs that you're focused on um, for reentry, in particular, um, assessing people and working with them while they're in the detention center, also assessing the calls and having, I, I love the new positions, I saw that in the budget, and I really am glad that you asked for those new positions for, to focus on mental health response. Um, but the reentry piece, you and I have talked about that years ago, um, is just critical. And it seems that, if I remember correctly, the recidivism was such a substantial problem, particularly, and the, you, you, one thing you said stuck out to me that a lot of things did, but um, you used to give them seven days of meds when people were released, and now we're up to 30. Yes. If I remember correctly, a couple years ago, your goal was 14 days, just to double it, <laughs> right? right? So to get to 30 is incredible. You need that transition time. So is it your um, belief that those types of programs, particularly that are focused on mental health within reentry and all of the other services, that is going to help address the recidivism and therefore could hopefully reduce that 40% um, of folks at the detention center long term. Yes, Commissioner. All the research uh, that's been done on uh, reentry efforts and recidivism uh, speak to the fact that if you are able to have those interventions both in while they're in custody and sustain those for a period of time when they leave the detention facility, uh, the, the recidivism rate uh, just falls right off. I mean, they aren't coming back into the system, and that's the idea. Now, obviously, uh, we and, and most of that research is done on a, a prison. Mm -hmm. We have very little done at the jail level, uh, but. So, and the reason is you have shorter periods of time. Uh, you're in prison, you stay for, you know, five, six years, so you're able to really change a person because you've got them longer. But we believe, because most of the crimes we were talking about are minor crimes for the most part, misdemeanors. 
And we believe if we can get the connection on the, in, the, in the community and keep that going over a long period of time, <clears throat> external to our detention facility, we can have those same outcomes. Uh, well, you really just touched on the second question that I was going to bring up. So um, I, that is fascinating that there is less data. It's not surprising for jail populations versus prison populations. But you are working closely, I believe, with the Carney Center and with others to assess the data, to look at that recidivism. So even if we don't have the studies out there as much as prisons, you have taken that lead yourself in working with your community partners to look at that data. Is that right? That's right. We, we have a, a person on staff whose yeah. job is to do that analysis for us and get it back. She's, uh, she's working a little hands to the bones right now. But, uh, but we'll have that data. We'll come back and share it with you all. That's fantastic. That may be a point, Mr. Chair, um, and I'm going to wrap it up in one second, that um, we could uh, use some of that data to help think about our response to homelessness, prevention, housing, other things like that. That's just one example. So I think I'll be really interested on that. The last thing I'm going to mention, and um, you got to this with most crimes are very minimal. So once someone ends up in the detention center, even if they don't have mental health issues, there, there's a lot of cost for all of us for the individual, and it can set people on a very difficult path when they are released, even with a support. I remain concerned um, about the small quantities, you know this, of marijuana, particularly <coughs> the, I think, unequal application, and I know this is not something that you can address, we've talked about this in past years, but for those who can afford a medical marijuana card, they're carrying something legal. And then you may have someone else who can't afford that medical marijuana card or doesn't want to be part of the system for some reason, and they get caught up in the criminal justice system. So um, I would, I, you have your plate full right now, and particularly in a tough year for multiple reasons, not just the pandemic, but if there are any programs to address um, mitigating, you know, those small crimes before people land in detention center, I think I'd be really interested in hearing about that, whether it's medical marijuana or other issues in the future. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Vice Chair Proctor. Thank you, Sheriff. I thank you so much. I want to know, we give uh, the Sheriff a lot of money, and I saw some uh, pictures recently from TPD, and the police officers were beating a snot out of citizens. What makes the Sheriff's deputies better than that. What confidence should this community have and can we have? Do y'all do background mental checks on deputies against uh, their racial uh, uh, dispositions, uh, their hate? Um, citizens are very, very tentative in their trust, respect, and their concern with the processes with which interactions between citizens of Leon County and uh, law enforcement. Um, that captures in a big way uh, what a lot of people in my district are feeling right now with respect to TPD for sure in Leon County Sheriff. Can you, can you tell us a little bit what comfort for the millions of dollars that we help to pay your unit that we're going to be treated with respect and decency? Commissioner, uh, I can only speak to the Leon County Sheriff's Office, and I will tell you that uh, we spend copious uh, amount of time uh, talking about those issues. Uh, they're not always pleasant uh, discussions that we have, uh, but we, we make sure that our staff understands that we, we have an affirmation that, uh, that we take from the founding person of law enforcement that says the public are the police and the police are the public. And that's, we believe that, we, we talk about that. It is a part of our DNA in the Leon County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we also, I, I think our deputies know that uh, there is very zero tolerance for uh, acts that are outside of our policies and procedures and certainly outside of our constitutional responsibility to protect and serve the citizens of this community. And that's all I can speak to is, uh, is, is what I do. Uh, I, I, I haven't spent uh, any time looking at the Tulsa Police Department since, nine, since uh, 2008. Uh, last time I spent any appreciable time uh, looking at what they do and how they do it. I spend my time looking at what we do. Well, thank you, Sheriff. What they do poisons 
the overall perception of what you do. So spend some concerned time with where the general perception about law enforcement is, is, is uh, emanating. Um, I like the mental health piece. I want to encourage you to be bold. Uh, you are different, uh, but to continue uh, the processes of uh, de-escalating uh, encounters with uh, a lot of people who, and I wish that from a personal standpoint and a community standpoint, that this approach had been available uh, in years past. I think that it's going to prove um, um, worthy uh, in our future. I wanted to ask you, Sheriff, uh, are your offices, uh, how are they ranked in pay in, in terms of the counties uh, comparable to ours? Are, are we on scale with fully uh, paying uh, the men and women who wear your uniform and provide the services and place their lives in danger? Are we there yet in parity of pay? We, uh, our, our deputies start out at 46,950 something, I believe, uh, just off the top of my head. I will tell you we are in the process right now of doing a uh, study of our, our, our pay situation, our, and we're trying to make sure that not only at the uh, start level, but all the way through, uh, that we have our pay uh, ranges in the right place. Uh, so I can't really answer that question uh, today. I can't tell you how we compare to other agencies. Uh, uh, I will tell you that locally, obviously, Tallahassee like Police Department uh, has always made more than, than we do uh, in terms of pure salary. But when you look at all the benefits, we come fairly close to having the same salary. But uh, to answer your question, I'd have to go back and actually do that research, and I haven't done that. Okay. My final comment, Mr. Chairman, is simply to... Uh encourage uh, Sheriff McNeil to continue to hold up the bloodstained banner of making sure that the sensitivity uh, with which our community is able to respect law enforcement uh, is a standard uh, that you insist upon. Uh, we're at a very fragile uh, stage. And um, on January the 6th, some people who were uh, attacking our nation's capital. Uh, it comes to the awareness of Americans that some wore badges and were associated with, uh, and they communicate on websites that are um, um, hate-filled. And I, I just need for, as one commissioner here, uh, you have my support too, uh, for your continued uh, uh, advocacy and adherence to uh, department that is universally uh, fair in treating the citizens of our county, uh, sensitive uh, to uh, the various uh, personalities that make uh, the sociological matrix of Tallahassee Lynn County, and that uh, they would uh, at all times, and I really admire what happened in, I uh, uh, can't remember the county, but with the 14-year-old and the 12-year-old was shooting at the sheriff. And I know that the policy is to shoot to kill, but somebody had a heart and didn't kill those little children. And I like that kind of restraint, constraint, and humanitarian um, consideration that they could have killed them, little kiddies, but they didn't. And I think that that kind of common sense and reasonableness is something that we should... Um, should be a central part and core value of, of, of your unit. So I thank you for all of your efforts for our community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. you. Sorry, thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. Commissioner Cummings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sheriff McNeil and, and your officers, I certainly want to express my appreciation on behalf of all the citizens of Leon County for all the work that you all do to keep us safe day to day, year in, year out, month to month. We certainly rely upon law enforcement. Uh, I appreciate the holistic approach that you have taken to law enforcement here in Leon County. You're not just looking <coughs> from the criminal aspect, but you have 
looked at our children. You're, you're looking at reducing recidivism. And, you know, I had the, the pleasure of hearing you speak at a seminar uh, not too long ago. And one of the things that resonated with me is your expression that, you know, anytime there's a problem or an issue with citizens, they call law enforcement. And you gave an example, several examples. But you said when parents can't get their children to go to school in the morning, they call law enforcement. And I thought about that. And I know when there are family issues, the first thing family members say is, "Pick up the phone. I'm going to call law enforcement. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call the sheriff. So you have an enormous responsibility to keep us safe. But you have taken a holistic <laughs> approach in doing that, and I appreciate that. Now, I'm aware of an initiative that the sheriff has in partnership with the Leon County Library. That's very impressive to me. And of course, I recognize that you were a member of the Children's Services Council Committee that, start, that studied the state of our children here in Leon County and led to the initiative being on the ballot last fall. But I'm very impressed with the initiative with the library and that you partner with them so that families can come to the library and through Zoom and in other technology, they are able to communicate with their family members that are incarcerated or might be incarcerated at your facility. Can you speak to that yes, in the inception we, of it and what you envision from that, Sheriff? Well, like a lot of things, I get a lot of credit for, but uh, uh, the Assistant Sheriff uh, Harrelson, I actually came up with that idea. Uh, he understands what we're trying to do, in, in fact, better than I do, because he's on the ground looking at these issues. And uh, Steve basically said that uh, we uh, can work this out to where uh, there's no reason why somebody should drive all the way across town. We have libraries all over the community. And if we can make it available in the libraries, and then Steve obviously went to the libraries and started talking to the staff there, and we've got it worked out, at least for one right now, <coughs> initially uh, have two, uh, where we will actually have the parent, uh, the child can go to the library, actually read to the parent who's in our detention facility, and as you're saying, it, it will make a tremendous difference in the attitude that that inmate has and connect that child back to the parent. So it's a seamless, the whole thing is about having as much of a seamless return to the, to the home as we can possibly have. That was uh, Steve Harrison. Well, thank you, Sheriff, for that explanation. And I'm a firm believer that charity begins at home. And if we can strengthen our homes and strengthen our families, we strengthen our communities as well. And so I believe the holistic approach that you take and have taken based on your report and, you know, having incorporated it with your work with the Boy Scouts, it, uh, uh, embracing uh, the Boy Scouts, embracing our youth, so that we can encourage them at an early age and they'll grow up to be productive citizens. So I'm not going to um, reiterate or elaborate on what the other commissioners have said, but just want to uh, congratulate you and thank you for being here, continuing the good work. I've always been impressed with your all in campaign. And, and I think I can speak from everybody on this podium that we are all in supported of you supportive of you so thank, thank you. you very much thank you commissioner mm -hmm. thank you commissioner cummings commissioner jackson did you have a few words you wanted to say all right sheriff i just wanted i, I don't want to reiterate everything that my colleagues have said but there are elements of everything that they've said that i completely agree with thank you for everything that you and your your entire team are doing uh to keep us safe uh it's incredible work uh we're very grateful to you uh people in leon county are very grateful to everything that you're doing sir thank you for everything and thank you also uh, commissioner maddox touched on this as did others um, one thing we hear about constantly is, is the need for increased focus on mental health support. And so your focus on that is, I think, very, uh, very appropriate. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all. All right. Mr. County Administrator, I'm going to make my way down to the podium. Would you please introduce the next item? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. 
Our next presentation uh, is a proclamation recognizing Jim Stevenson and Tara Tanaka for their lifelong conservation efforts. Uh, Chairman Miner. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Um, I've, really, I've really been looking forward to delivering this proclamation. Um, um, Jim Stevenson and, and Tara Tanaka um, are really an inspiration to many, including myself and my daughter. Uh, I, my, my daughter and I went to visit the Cy Cypress Swamp Sanctuary a few weeks ago, and she was enamored uh, with everything that she saw, as was I. So um, really looking forward to this. <clears throat> Whereas in 2007, Jim A. A. Stevenson and Tara Tanaka acquired the 42-acre Cypress Swamp, bordered by Capital Circle Northwest, to manage and protect the wetland as a wildlife sanctuary. And whereas this swamp is thought to be the last remaining rookery of the federally threatened wood stork in Leon County, totaling approximately 700 storks during nesting season. Wood storks banded in the Everglades and in North Georgia have been observed in this sanctuary. Other notable nesting birds include the great blue heron, great egret, and hinga and woods ducks. And whereas a conservation easement has been designated by the Appalachian Land Conservancy, to enhance protection of the sanctuary, and whereas Jim and Tara have assembled small acreage landowners in Leon and adjacent counties to provide land stewardship guidance, and the, whereas the sanctuary has hosted field trips for the Appalachian Audubon Society, the Native Plant Society, and others for naturalist field trips, and whereas their Cypress Swamp Sanctuary is a safe haven release site for rehabilitated wildlife from St. Francis Wildlife Association, and whereas Jim and Tara have spent thousands of dollars and thousands of hours controlling invasive plants to maintain the ecological health of the sanctuary. And whereas, Tara Tanaka is an award-winning wildlife photographer and videographer whose photos and videos have been displayed in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., and her photos have been published in Audubon and Nature's Best Photography magazines and other publications and calendars, many of which were taken in their backyard sanctuary. And whereas, the Florida Wildlife Federation presented Jim and Tara the 2021 Land Steward of the Year Award for their management of the sanctuary. And whereas, several organizations have written letters of commendation, including the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, Defenders of Wildlife, Appalachian Audubon Society, Native Plant Society, and National Wildlife Federation, and, almost done, whereas Jim and Tara have enriched the wildlife values enjoyed by the people of Leon County, demonstrating the importance of private landowners to enhance the quality of life of our county. And now for, therefore be it resolved, that the Board of County of the Leon County Commission thank Jim A. Stevenson and Tara Tanaka for their contributions to the natural values of Leon County and commend their longstanding commitment to sensitive stewardship and protection. Steve, did you want to say a few words? Yes. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, my wife, Tara Tanaka, and I... Uh, <clears throat> recently adopted an adolescent uh, rescue dog from the shelter, and uh, he's a handful, so she wasn't able to come with me to, uh, this afternoon. She's uh, dog-setting. Uh, thank you for the recognition uh, of the importance of private and public wetlands in Leon County. Some of these wetlands are large lakes like Jackson and Ammonia, but most are smaller, like our 45-acre cypress swamp that we manage as a wildlife sanctuary. These wetlands produce thousands of wading birds, including wood storks seen here and other wildlife that are enjoyed by the people of our county. Wetlands also cleanse and replenish the water flowing to our aquifer, the source of our drinking water. Protection of these wetlands requires vigilance because they are gradually being lost through random growth. Tara and I are grateful to the Florida Wildlife Federation for selecting us to receive the 2021 Land Steward of the Year Award, and we are very pleased to receive this proclamation from the Leon County Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stevenson, thank you very much for all of your work for Leon County 
And I was reflecting recently that just before the pandemic hit, I was able, I, it may have been your last tour um, that John and my mother and I were able to join you at the Springs tour. I know you don't do that as often as you used to, and probably not so much this year, but every way you have found to educate our community, whether it's the tour, through the photography, the Tara does, all of the different things you've done has had such an incredible impact. Thank you very much. And I must say I'm also glad to know that a rescue dog can work in, uh, in an environment such as yours with a wood stork. So that's a, that's a good note for the rest of us, that the dogs and the work stores can go and exist. Good luck with that. Thank you. Um. You know, Jim, you know, there's one major thing that you and I have in common, in that we, uh, we both married up. So uh, yes. please tell Tara that uh, we wish she could be here, but please give her our best regards. So thank well, you for everything. Let's please give a big hand to uh, Jim and Tara. As the chairman makes his way back to the... Uh, to the uh, to the podium here, I, I wanted to just, or to the dais rather, I just wanted to invite um, uh, the Creative uh, Communities Institute, um, uh, Tyler Maldonado, uh, to uh, approach the podium uh, to make a presentation. Commissioners, you'll recall that this was a presentation that, that you all requested recently uh, on the uh, Knight Creative Institute's Art of the Box Community Project. We've been lucky enough to to be a participant in this, and with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Tyler Maldonado. Yeah, thank you. I also want to congratulate Jim. He's a legend in the di a division that I work at at DEP, so congratulations to you. Um, good afternoon, Commission. My name's Tyler Maldonado. Um, I'm representing the 2021 uh, KCCI uh, Community Catalyst Group. I'll be presenting on our partnership with the Office of Resource Stewardship, but I'd first like to briefly introduce my team. Um, and mention KCCI's past work on the Art of the Box program. So Mike Pape, he's our fearless leader. We've got a few, if y'all could wave or stand up and give a little wave. We've got Shannon, Dan, uh, Erica, Joey, and Allie. Um, our team's made up of 13 community members with diverse range of professions. Um, we were selected last December to serve for one year, um, and we've been meeting weekly um, since January to work on expanding the Art of the Box program. Uh, the Art of the Box program seeks to deter graffiti by wrapping traffic and utility boxes with artwork from local artists. In addition to graffiti deterrence, uh, this program is a small step towards larger placemaking efforts to help beautify neighborhoods and stimulate the local art economy. Um, there are currently 15 wrapped boxes around Tallahassee, and by the end of this year, um, there will be 28 more that have been wrapped. Uh, these are a few of the original pieces that were that helped launch the Art of the Box program. Um, so if you see Harmony by Perdita Ross, um, that was the first piece uh, installed on county property. That's also the only piece installed on county property. Um, in our partnership with the uh, Office of Resource Stewardship, uh, we'll expand that total number of wrapped county boxes to 10. Um, we are working with both the city and the county to expand the Art of the Box program. Um, so the two images you see on the slide are those boxes that are being wrapped. Um, the one on the left is a traffic control box, and those are all managed by the city. Uh, the one on the right is a um, utility box, a backflow cover um, on one of the county properties. And those are really what we're going to be wrapping with our county partnership. Uh, we worked with the Office of Resource Stewardship to have identify the best county locations. Um, and those are shown on the slide here. The green dots are representing all of the, the different um, locations that you can read there. The red dots are showing all of those boxes that have already been um, wrapped. Uh, we chose these locations um, because they were going to continue the momentum of wrapped artwork in the downtown area, as well as the uh, multimodal transportation district. And we also wanted to have a geographic distribution throughout the county. Uh, our work with the city has resulted in a commitment to, um, for 12 additional boxes that will be wrapped within the multimodal transportation district, as well as six others um, that are going to be dis dispersed throughout the city limits. Um, for my last few slides, I wanted to share some of the artwork that we've recommended for the county sites. 
Uh, we put out a call for artists between April and May, and we received 58 submissions. Um, our team was able to narrow that down to 22, and then we enlisted the help of a professional, um, Amanda Thompson at COCA, to help make um, the final recommendations. Uh, at this time, the, the boxes are scheduled to be wrapped on July 9th, and we also have a unveiling event uh, scheduled at the main library for July 15th. Um, so I'm just going to click through some of these and let you check them out. Um, this one will be going to Woodville Park. Uh, this one's going to be at the Northeast Branch Library. This one will be at uh, Appalachia Regional Park. This will be at the Downtown Main Library. And then this one's going to be right here at the County Courthouse back on Calhoun Street. Um, with that, if I could take a few more seconds, I just want to thank the Commission for allowing us to present uh, our project this year. Um, I also want to give a special thanks to our county um, partners, Maggie Thoreau and Michael Boland at the Office of Resource Stewardship have been a huge help. Um, Frank Dietrich at the Tallahassee Leon County Planning Department, he's formatting all of our artwork to make sure it's able to fit on the boxes. Amanda Thompson, like I said, at, at COCA has helped us make those final recommendations. And then John Buck at, at Fast Signs. He's the one helping us actually wrap those. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Mr. Maldonado. I've got uh, Commissioner Dozier, and then I'll wrap it up. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tyler, thank you very much for your presentation and for all your team members who are here. Um, and Mike, of course, it's good to see you um, leading another great team through the KCCI process. Um, I first heard this presentation and requested it at, at the COCA board meeting a couple months ago. And as I shared with your team just before the meeting, I, you all have done so much work just in the last few months since I heard that first presentation. So that is fantastic. And one of the things I didn't hear at that time was this robust partnership with the Office of Resource Stewardship. So I was really excited to hear about that a few weeks ago. And you said the event at the library is going to be on the 15th, July 15th, is that all right? Yes. But all of the boxes will be unveiled on the 9th? Uh, they'll all be wrapped on the 9th, on the and then wrapped. they'll kind of all be, it'll be unveiled on the 15th. Gotcha. <laughs> wrapped is the unveiling. I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll make my colleagues a little jealous. I got a couple of those in District 5, so that's nice. Appalachian Regional Park and Northeast yeah. Library, the Courthouse too, I think. So um, looking forward to seeing all of those. Um, at the COCA meeting, I think we expanded and talked a little bit about other types of art and public spaces um, and some brainstorming that you all might have about the future. If you wanted to share any of those thoughts or where the team might go from here, I wanted to give you that opportunity. But really, in teaming that up, I, I think you all started, like so many KCCI teams do, was something that was really manageable, and I congratulate you on that. This um, is an exceptional project, and people are really taking notice. So thank you for that hard, hard work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and Allie is actually spearheading our um, future thinking project, so I don't want to speak for her. If she wanted to come up and speak, she can do Well, we could, we could bring you all back when you have future thinking, yeah, future ideas as well. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Good. All right, Mr. Maldonado. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Dozier. Appreciate it. Mr. Maldonado, thank you very much to you and your team and to Betsy Couch and to Mike Pate. It's, it's really a tremendous project. Um, maybe, I, maybe it's because I'm looking for them, but I, I see them all around town now, yeah. uh, everywhere I go. Bump into one when I turn around. It's, um, it's, it's, it's terrific. And, you know, uh, art has, a, has the power to really, to really uplift you, right? Yeah. And um, one thing I found from my time on KCCI many years ago was that when people find art in unexpected places, it has even a more profound impact. When you aren't expecting it, and then all of a sudden you see something beautiful, it really has an impact on you. And so that's exactly what Art of the Box does. So thanks to, um, to you and everything that you're doing. I really appreciate it for you and your entire KCCI team. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next and final presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the final presentation. This is where we uh, normally present to you our formal presentation. Uh, related to COVID-19 in terms of an update. Um, as you know, uh, at the last meeting, we brought you an item uh, where we were going to uh, sort of scale these down after um, over a year of providing uh, these formal updates to you. Uh, but we did want to, and at the request of the board, uh, have one more uh, opportunity uh, to, to provide uh, a presentation to you. 
Uh, however, Claudia Blackburn informs me that she finally ran out of things to say after one year. Just, just kidding. We'll never run out of things to say on this topic. But Claudia is here to um, answer any questions that you might have, Commissioners. We do not have a formal presentation today, but I did want to pause, Mr. Chairman, uh, in case. But Claudia is with us, as has been recognized earlier today. So. Uh, did want to pause uh, to allow the board to ask any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Commissioner Jackson, you wanted to say a few words, correct, sir? Yeah, just uh, quickly. Claudia, stand up. <laughs> We've been seeing you for the last 13 years. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead ma'am. So, do you want to report or? <laughs> What's the will of the board? Uh, do you have Commissioner uh, Dozier in line to speak? Uh, would you like to see a presentation, or Commissioner Dozier would like to provide your comments, and we can decide after that. Um. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not hearing any other comments, and I, this, I would guess, <coughs> might be part of your report, Claudia. So I won't repeat what Commissioner Jackson said, but um, I, 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 I just say ditto all of his comments. Thank you, and it's great to see you in person. Um, I just noted on the um, uh, the Friday update we got from county administrator that unfortunately our numbers are increasing slightly last week. Um, it was up to 5.91% from 5.2% the week before. Um, I know that we, we had talked about this at the last meeting a month ago that Although our numbers were fairly low, we could see an uptick depending on travel, the holiday weekend, things like that. So um, I just wanted to check in on what the testing is like, whether or not people are still coming to get testing or if people are really feeling like we're past that, let's go have some fun because we're all exhausted by more than a year of the pandemic. So sure, I can, I can talk about that. and. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I was sitting in the back because we're hoping very soon at the Department of Health in Leon that this will be on the back burner and uh, we can return to blue skies. That's what we're working towards, getting children their regular vaccinations, getting ready for school, uh, dealing with all of the problems that we haven't paid enough attention to for the last year, including getting people back to a healthier state than they were in prior to the pandemic. Um, Really, the, the news is pretty good. Um, for the last two weeks, our positivity rate has been 3.89%. And uh, for the last week, we've had about 17 cases a day. Uh, so, you know, that that is pretty good. And the other really good news, it's, it's not good enough as far as I'm concerned, but it's, it's better than it was. Um, we are down, in the month of May, we had 10 deaths. Um, versus 76 in the month of January when we were at our peak. So we've really come down. I want to see that at zero. And, of course, the way to get there is to continue to for people to get vaccinated. So um, I can tell you that right now we're at 47% of eligible people that are vaccinated. And uh, they're... It's just not moving quickly. We're, we're lots of outreach is going on. Uh, it's lots of access is available. So we just want to continue to encourage people to get vaccinated and not be the one that uh, was planning to sometime and then got COVID and got really sick, um, maybe infected others that uh, that weren't immune. So, so that's kind of the message right now. I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank you all because you have provided tremendous leadership and support. I've talked to my colleagues and I know what I've got here, and I know that um, just the partners in this community really came together. It's been a tremendous experience. And so um, this, this, and, and you know, our, our, our preparedness uh, uh, practice really helps with that, but uh, it really paid off and will continue to pay off in all the things we do as we work on the root causes of, of poor health. So uh, thank you all very much. Ms. Blackburn, Ms. Blackburn, just 
Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Dozier. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I was just going to say thank you for the numbers a whole lot better than um, what I had in my notes. So um, <coughs> thank you very much. And I think that is something significant for us to think about, not just vaccines. I know you all are working hard on that as a, other members of our community. Um, but 76 deaths in January and 10 in May, significant progress, even if all 10 in May are a tragedy. And I feel for all of those families. I know everyone does. So um, thank you for the update and for your hard work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Vice Chair Proctor, and then I'll wrap it up. I remember we used to do um, evacuation drills in the courthouse. And I was in court one day, and someone pulled the alarm. Up. It was a drill. And uh, thankfully, we have never had to do anything other than a drill uh, here at the courthouse. Um, I wanted to thank Ms. Blackburn, her staff, because they never got to have a drill on how to collaborate with uh, the multiple agencies that had suddenly to come together, work together, and to uh, foster a single track of tracking information, uh, a coherent, a uh, comprehensive message to various uh, strata of our community. <laughs> and um, some people hear best by seeing pictures. Uh, some hear best when people like Commissioner Maddox and Commissioner Minor say, I took a shot. Uh, some people hear best by someone in their family catching it. They say, oh, this is real. But through all of the uh, milieu uh, and the distinctions which uh, people process here, gather information, uh, your organization has been a stalwart. And to the extent that politics uh, uh, certainly has uh, been a factor in who gets to be the lead voice and does science talk, do uh, politicians talk, uh, your ability to balance all of those dynamics has been remarkable. And I just can't uh, say enough about our staff and uh, Vince Long and the speed with which the reporting, uh, uh, the quality of the reporting week after week is not second to any, and that includes the Department of Health and um, Human Services. That includes the um, uh, Department of um, uh, Health in Florida. Commissioners, we have watched our administrative leaders uh, process, wrap their minds around, and create a reporting paradigm which function across the entirety of our community. And there was no prior drill, no practice. We were just under a pandemic, and we were ordered to close and so forth. So a real salute, uh, a positive shout out to Ms. Blackburn, uh, her leadership of an agency trapped in political dynamics that I can't even fathom, and for Vince uh, and y'all's ability to interpret and translate our community and come up with uh, various uh, platforms by which to get information out, we ain't sucking to nobody. And if anybody, and I heard what you said, and if anybody in the state of Florida threaded the needle as well as we did, I sure want to meet them. But if we're not the best, I'm well pleased uh, with the efforts of our county, uh, the gathering of resources, it, was a, it has been a phenomenal uh, reaction and watch and observation. And um, in my career uh, as a county commissioner, uh, because there's no warning and no practice and no blue book, no manual, uh, I would have to say, Vince, that this is probably among the very, very bestest administrative responses I've ever seen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. I've got uh, Commissioner Maddox, and then I will uh, I'll wrap things up. Commissioner Maddox. I'll be, I'll be brief. I, I think that we have to acknowledge uh, <clears throat> Claudia's patience with us, with us at times and her ability to, to uh, take criticism and, 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 and make things happen for us. I know there were a couple moments throughout the process where there's a lot of frustration throughout the chambers because we wanted certain things to happen. Uh, we asked you to make those happen, and you, those things happen, and you did. And I didn't want to let this moment pass without us acknowledging the fact of you are an amazing partner, even through the harsh conversations that we had from the dais. Uh, you responded, and you made those things happen. I think that is the measure of a truly special professional to be able to have a tough conversation, but on the other end, still perform your job better than most, uh, better than anybody I've ever dealt with. I mean, we're, this is a pandemic. I mean, I'll, I've never lived through one. I don't think anybody up here has. Uh, but you you did an amazing job. Your staff did an amazing job. We appreciate your partnership. But I especially want you to know that I appreciate those moments where it, weren't, it, it wasn't as easy of a conversation. You still listen. You performed. And you did the things we asked you to do. I want to take a moment to appreciate that. Thank you so much. And thank you for mentioning the health department staff because they're really the ones that made it happen. And uh, it's just been an amazing experience working with them. So thank you for that. I'll take that back to them. And Ms. Blackburn, just to, just to uh, wrap up, I, um, you and I have had conversations. I think you've had conversations with most of the commissioners during the last year, you know, during the pandemic. And um, I got glimpses of some of the challenges that you and your staff had to endure. Um, but I, th I think the vast majority of people will, will never completely understand exactly what type of constraints and what type of challenges you and your team had. Uh, countless hours, sleepless nights, um, working, with two, working with multiple different agencies, um, all asking for answers that you, that you had incomplete data to provide with, right? So um, as Commissioner Maddox said, I, I just, you know, I think we all are in agreement here. Thank you for everything that you and your team have done. Um, it's really been truly in incredible to, to watch. You know, when true leadership shows itself during a crisis, and the fact that we had you in, in your department, uh, you had leadership here at the county with the county administrator and his, and his team, um, multiple other agencies, the hospitals, their, their staff, all working together, not playing turf battles, but working together mm -hmm. to keep people safe and working with incomplete information and, and using that information as best we could to make the best decisions that we could. Um, that was real leadership. So thanks to you and, and everyone else involved in this for the last year plus. It's been quite a quite a ride. But uh, you and, and your team can be very proud of everything that you've accomplished. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, commissioners, we are now finished with awards and presentations and moving on to consent. Um, as you know, we've had items 15, 16, and 19 pulled from the consent agenda. Mr. County Administrator, are there any additional agenda items pulled from consent? There are not, just 15, 16, and 19. All right, thank you. Uh, commissioners, is there a motion to approve the remaining items from consent? Okay, a motion has been made by Commissioner Dozier to approve all the items in consent except for 15, 16, and 19, seconded by Commissioner Jackson. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion passes unanimously, 6-0, with Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. All right, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the first item pulled from consent? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, well, I think we'll take 15 and 16 together, both pulled by the district commissioner, both pulled by Commissioner Welch, uh, both issues related to um, uh, road conditions, uh, one uh, 15 on Proctor Road, and then safety enhancements um, that um, were uh, approved by the board uh, to come back related to Meridian, and with that, I will um, defer to the, the district commissioner. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Welch. County Administrator. Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to pull these briefly um, to acknowledge staff's work on these issues for me. Uh, item 15 is Proctor Road. As, as some of you may know in your historical knowledge on the board, there's a six-mile stretch of Proctor Road that is unpaved uh, between Centerville Road and Thomasville Road, and there are a, a collection of homeowners over there who, after heavy rains, as I think we received this afternoon, thank the heavens, because um, it's been dry, but they're probably not happy because the road gets a little slippery. And, um, and so I asked the county administrator and his staff um, our folks at Public Works to come up with some solutions 
to try and mitigate some of those negative impacts associated with rainstorms and things like that. And so they came up with this, uh, an opportunity to try to expedite some uh, road repairs and grading in that area, um, maybe inside the 14-day cycle. Really great analysis. And I just wanted to thank them for that and uh, move option one on, on item 15. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Welch. Uh, motions are made to approve option one for uh, items 15 and 16? Just 15. 15. I'll talk on 16. My mistake. Seconded by Commissioner Dozier. Uh, Commissioner Welch, um, okay. Uh, all, all, the, all in favor of the motion as stated, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Commissioner Welch. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, item 16 is a, uh, an issue that I asked to come back as an agenda item as well, dealing with some safety enhance enhancements along Meridian Road. Um, as you all are probably aware, we had a tragic accident there uh, in March in which two Childs High School students lost their lives. Um, I, I think it's, it's uh, in, in the 22 years that Childs High School has been open, I think we've had We've lost students in car accidents, I think, 14 or 15 of those years. Uh, tremendously high, uh, given the situation. And as we grow in the Northeast and we see more traffic on the roads, um, you all know that it's, an, it's important to me that we, we look at pedestrian safety and, and uh, bicyclist safety and roadway safety. And, and uh, the, the area of the road where the accident occurred is a particularly treacherous, uh, problematic stretch of road where you have some level changes and some curves. And, um, and so I asked the staff, a county administrator, and, uh, and I, I don't know which department events, would it be Public Works again? Um, they do a great job, <laughs> Public Works. Uh, they went out there and looked at that, and, the, and they are going to, this item will put in some Chevron signs and some retro reflective uh, thingies in the road. I don't know what the technical term is for those thingies, quote unquote which will uh, enhance the safety in that stretch of road. And so I just wanted to acknowledge again staff's uh, help with that. And I think that's a step in the right direction. As I said on the news yesterday, uh, as we see more traffic in Northeast Leon County as we continue to grow, I uh, just want to encourage folks to slow down, pay attention. Uh, we have a lot of young drivers on the road all over our county. Uh, I'll be having one in the next year or so, which stresses me out big time. And so uh, I don't think any of us uh, can imagine the, the, the sheer um, sadness when getting a, getting a call like that. So thank you, Mr. County Administrator, and I'll move option one on item 16. As well. I'll, I'll second that, Commissioner Welch. Thank you very much. And, and my district uh, uh, follows along Meridian Road as well, so, and I live just off of Meridian Road. And uh, uh, those, those accidents have been tragic. And uh, I really appreciate your leadership on taking this on. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, motion's been made for option one on item 16, seconded by myself. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the final item pulled from consent? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, item number 19 is a status report uh, on Leon County government's uh, pay plan processes, promotion, uh, recruitment, and retention strategies. That's the policy. Um, and it was... Um, uh, requested to come back uh, uh, as a report to you all, uh, which we've done here. Uh, this item was uh, pulled by uh, Commissioner Dozier, and I think I'll, I'll, I'll pave the way a little bit for Commissioner Dozier by saying we've had a good conversation about this item, and um, there was some additional information that, that I think that she'll speak to, and that is available, and we'd be very happy to provide to you. But with that, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Dozier, I will defer to you. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Very helpful. Um, this item uh, provided a lot of good information. I appreciate that. As you remember in our budget discussion, just wanted to dig into this a little bit more. And I'm not sure, Ms. County Administrator, if you or I will really say my colleagues need any additional information right now. What I'd like to do is make a motion to um, punt this to our uh, July 13th meeting and bring it back with some additional information about the classifications um, and the changes we've made in some of the employee classifications, particularly for upper-level employees, um, and how that has um, potentially impacted some employees' ability um, to move up, but also the, the change proposed by the county administrator um, in this budget um, could help resolve that some of those issues. So I, I'm not going into too much detail because I don't have 
a lot more of the detail here, but again, Mr. County Administrator, unless you need any additional direction from what we um, talked about yesterday, I'll just make that motion to move this to July 13th. All right, thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Is there a second for Commissioner Dozier's motion? Second. Second made by Commissioner Maddox. Any discussion? All's in favor of the motion uh, to take this agenda item and put it toward July 13th. Um, any other elaboration on that motion? Just with the additional information as discussed with County Minister. <clears throat> Seconded by Commissioner Maddox. All in favor of the motion as stated, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please uh, introduce any public speakers for the citizens to be heard on non-agenda items? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, we have a couple of items, uh, citizens to be heard on non-agenda items. The first one is Mr. Michael Rosenthal. All right, Mr. Rosenthal, thank you very much for coming, sir. Please, uh, as you, when you get up to the microphone, please uh, state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Hello, my name is Michael Rosenthal at 4045 Kilmartin Drive. I, too, am very concerned about the spiral of hate and extremism we have in our country today. In 1993, the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was confirmed 96 to 3. No one can envision that happening today unless there were 96 members in the Senate of the same party. Listening to Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump hurl insults at each other like third graders was a great embarrassment to our country. Your resolution does nothing to end the ratcheting cycle of hate. It might even inflame more hatred. Having a lecture series at a library will not lessen hate in our community. I am asking you to counter hate with love. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in your heart. Thou shalt not take vengeance nor bear any grudge. Martin Luther King said, let no man pull you so low as to hate him. Hate begets hate. Violence begets violence. We must meet the forces of hate with the power of love. Here is how you end hate in our community. Follow the example of Daryl Davis. Mr. Davis is a black man who engaged with white racist Klansmen. He didn't attack them. He developed a relationship with them. He has gotten scores of Klansmen to quit the Klan. I urge each one of you here to read more about Mr. Daryl Davis and check out videos of him on YouTube. Rather than pass this resolution, sponsor a Daryl Davis essay contest. Invite Mr. Davis to speak in Leon County. In your resolution, you denounce anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, but you leave out anti-Christian hate. This is after several Christian churches have been burned or vandalized in recent years. Why don't you denounce all violence in our community? You just denounce, quote, biased, motivated violent action. Does the plus on the LGBTQ plus include heterosexuals and cisgendered identification? If not, please add it. You condemn misogyny, but what about misandry? There are other racial supremacists besides whites. Why not just leave it at racial supremacy? You have also left out condemning the newest vile hate, critical race theory. The resolution also contains a mismatch of ill, a mismatch of ill-defined ambiguous terminology. The ADL was formed with the noble purpose to combat baseless hatred against the Jewish people. Since then, they have veered into radical partisan politics, calling for the impeachment of President Trump and for Tucker Carlson to be taken off the air. Since the ADL is seen as a Jewish organization, these radical positions generate anti-Semitism. The ADL does not represent the Jewish people. It's a radical organization whose members just happen to be Jewish. I urge you to reject the resolution and use the power of love to heal our community, and we need to live as our Creator intended us to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rosenthal. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next speaker? Yes, the final speaker's, uh, speaker on citizens to be heard on non agenda items is Ben Castro. Mr. Castro, welcome back, sir. Please uh, state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, 10454 Rose Road. Uh, I, uh, one of the things uh, not related that Nick Maddox was talking with the sheriff about reminded me something. Uh, I was a Leon County Deputy Sheriff in the mid-70s, and I worked a murder. I was the first one on the scene out in West Tennessee Street, Windmill Village, and the individual apprehended and got him fairly quick. And some months later, the courts declared he was criminally insane. I, for some reason, I was the officer that 
transferred him to the state hospital over in Chattahoochee. But just, uh, yeah, there's a high percentage of, of mental illness associated with crime. No, I wasn't coming here. I didn't know they was having a meeting today. But I, I came, same issue, uh, planning and zoning, and they will uh, say in this survey that I followed the directions of the employee there, Weldon Richardson, a fine individual. It's, it's, I've worked with him for several years, and we brought it in, and now they're saying it's a flag lot, and it, what is well described as an easement is not an easement. And so I'm just coming through ch ch chatting with Weldon this morning at his office, and I'm finding out he's, I'm not picking him to find out if he got in trouble, but yeah, he's in hot water over this, this issue. And then I said, well, maybe I need to go talk to his supervisor, Barry Wilcox, or Ryan Culpepper, or Scott Brockmeyer, and he said, well, they're bent to hell, not help you. And I said, well, anyway, and then, so I, I find out that there's this meeting today, and I said, well, maybe they ought to know about it. I called Scott, Scott's, set a meeting up with my sister and I, and I said, well, please have one of the county commissioners. Okay, I'll do that. I said, well, call him. I don't, I'll bet anything he's a, he hasn't called one of you. Uh, with that, uh, Weldon has helped. We followed his directions, and, and it's just to no avail, and just trying to figure out. But what I want you to do, though, is, is Mr. County Administrator and others, is, is – Weldon's well, well, taking heat on this thing, and the, the people that needs to be reprimanded is is the people above him. Uh, they need to be terminated or demoted and put Weldon Richardson running the planning and zoning because he knows how to help people. With that, uh, I'd still like to meet with you, some of you over this issue, but thank you for your time. Mr. Castro, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say I want to meet with the uh, county administrator on this issue to get some clarification as to what's going on, what he's talking about. All right, Vice Chair Proctor. <coughs> oh, Mr. County Administrator, do you have any, uh, can you, uh, Vice Chair Proctor was asking. No, if you just that any... we'll be happy to do that. I'll okay, very okay. Good. Thank you, uh, Mr. County Administrator. Uh, moving on to general business, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the first item? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this item seeks board approval of the 2021 Legislative Session Final Report and to schedule a workshop on the 22 state and federal legislative priorities for September 28th. Uh, the item also seeks direction regarding the county's state and federal lobbying contracts. With that, Commissioners, uh, Andy Johnson is prepared to provide a brief presentation, or if the board would rather, uh, he and our state contract lobbyists uh, who uh, the team is, is here today with uh, the Capital Alliance Group. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. For my part, Commissioners, uh, I just want to say thanks uh, again, to, just because the moment is, is here, uh, to thank both our, our federal and state contract lobbyists um, with Squire Patton Boggs and with the Capital Alliance Group, um, as well as our uh, county staff, uh, Andy Johnson and Nikki Payton, for all the hard work that they do uh, in the legislative arenas uh, for us. Um, and, and even though this year was a little different, I also want to thank uh, commissioners for always being uh, available to testify before committees during session. I know uh, because of our location, we get more than our fair share of opportunities uh, to do that. Uh, but it is important and, and always want to take the opportunity uh, to thank you for that, commissioners. And, and also uh, for being so engaged year round in the policy development process through FACT. So again, thank you for that. As I mentioned, Andy Johnson is prepared uh, to give a brief presentation or simply, it's whatever the direction of the commission is, to answer any questions that you might have. And as I mentioned, our Capital Alliance uh, team uh, is also uh, uh, here and, and willing to answer any questions it might have as well. So thank you for that, Mr. Chairman. We're recommending uh, options uh, one and two. And then as you'll see before you on options three and before, we're seeking your direction. And Great. again, happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. I, I thought the agenda item itself was pretty comprehensive. Uh, what's the will of the board? Would you like to see the presentation? No, Mr. Chairman, I think it's pretty comprehensive and clear. We've been updated throughout the session. Um, unless there's a new session coming and something we need to know about. Okay. Um, is that the will of the board? I see no objection. I think we'll move on um, to the speakers. Um, Mr. County Administrator, I believe you have one speaker for this item. Is that correct? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have one speaker, Ruth Chase. 
Ms. Chase, thank you very much for coming today. If you would, uh, once you get up to the microphone, please state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. My name is Ruth Chase, 9540 Oak Hollow Trail. And I always wonder why people go into government, but this has been really fun. It's always really fun to come to the county commission meeting. We request Leon County Commission pass a resolution in support of the For the People Act, HB1 and S1. For decades, Leon County has staged exemplary elections with plenty of polling sites, extended hours, and early voting. Leon County, under Ion Sancho and Mark Early, pioneered a system for conducting <coughs> forensic audits which exceed the state standards. Other states, other counties, other citizens have not had equal voting rights or facilities. HR1 and S1 would make those voters' experiences more like ours in Leon County. Right now, 22 state legislators, legislatures, including Florida, have sent any significant statistical voting fraud, are passing hysterical, repressive laws, su suppressing the, re the repression of the Nixon Southern strategy. The sole intent in voter suppression, especially people of color, we do not want to live in a country in which legal citizens are denied the right to vote or suppressed. Elections are the breath of democracy. If we cannot breathe, democracy will not survive. Never before in American history has white Americans seen, seen so clearly our nation's foundational systemic racism. Repressive election laws are designed to hide racism and exert force over power. Noreen Cardia says, quote, democracy is a living thing. I say our vote is the breath of democracy. We ask our commissioners to officially support HR1 and S1 on our behalf. Thank you. Ms. Chase, thank you very much. Really appreciate you being here. Um, Okay, well, on, uh, for commissioners on the speaker's queue, we've got uh, Vice Chair Proctor, Commissioner Maddox, and Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, speaker just said a mouthful, a lot of issues. I looked at HB1 in the literature um, uh, as well, the anti-riot measure. My previous comments to the sheriff as well as my written communications to the sheriff earlier this year uh, about common sense and decency with respect to protesters. Uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the, our uh, law enforcement here in the state's capital where presidential politics are abounding to uh, not uh, enforce the law, but we are the citadel of protest for our state. And this particular measure, uh, uh, SB1, uh, requires uh, a whole lot of extra from law enforcement, uh, HB1. And this is something which uh, is untenable. And I find that it's disruptive to uh, the First Amendment. And it uh, places a chilling effect on the right of people to peacefully to uh, assemble, to petition their government for redress of grievances. This is pitiful. Uh, also, this legislative session, we have seen uh, that democracy uh, on the whole is, is on death row. And it's too bad that the Florida legislature is sought to sentence uh, democratic access to the poll and the suppression of voters' access to the polls uh, and to make more complicated steps to vote in our state, which uh, state by state utilizing 10th Amendment powers. Uh, we're not looking at a democracy, but a white democracy, or the, the widenizing of democracy, because people of color are being frustrated and uh, in many ways suppressed from the right to vote. Um, there's another way to say this, but it pisses me off, and there are other ways to say that. 
but that everybody be clear. Our legislature, our leadership in this state with respect to democratic principles and ideas of which blood, sweat, and tears have gone forth. And the achievement of the 65 Voting Rights Act is heroic. And we ought not to uh, in any way uh, uh, bow down to and kiss the ring of Caesar. I'm asking us to stand tall, to encourage our law enforcement to be reasonable. And this is why, um, for the work that has been done by our lobbying teams, I wish to uh, make uh, the motion of option one, two, three A, and four A um, as my motion. Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. Motion's been made for options one, two, three A, four A, seconded by Commissioner Jackson. Uh, next in the speakers, are you, are you finished, sir? Yes, sir. Um, next in the speaker's queue, I've got Commissioners Maddox, Dozier, and Welch. Commissioner Thank Maddox. You, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first things first, I think our lobbying team has done an amazing job for us, and I appreciate the work that you've done. Uh, Patton Boggs, Jeff Sharkey, very legit firms. Um, I want to talk a little bit, as you guys have probably used to me talking about it these days, about a little bit about the MWB participation within both of those contracts. For one, Six years ago, I think we added $10,000 to the uh, state contract for MWBE. It took him, I think, from 60 to 70. Is that correct, Alan? Yeah, it went 50 to 70, but yeah, there was a component of MBE, correct? Right, right, right. Um, what I'm looking to do here today is, is, is promote, the, promote the idea of uh, what, what we're trying to do with our MDB, MWBE pro, program is get some of our subs to a place that that they can one day compete as primaries. I don't think that uh, 10,000 with the work that's done allows for that to happen. Um, what I would like to do is, Commissioner Proctor, if you were entertaining the thought, is go from 70 to 85 on that, on that state contract and allocate 25,000 towards, uh, towards the MWE, MWBE portion of it and ask that the county administrator and staff uh, throughout the year, come come back and give us a little information about best practices across the state when it comes to that split or that MWBE component, percentage-wise, of what other firm, or other other counties are doing. Again, I think that our, the firms that we're with is doing they're doing an amazing job. At the same time, and I think Mr. Sharkey will tell you, uh, in the world of lobbying, minorities uh, are are a minority in that field, and so. To, to create an, an opportunity where you're not just giving them or checking off a box of 10,000, but something substantive like 25 or even more than that, looking at the standards across the state, allows for those minority firms to kind of spread their wings, learn a little bit, and maybe even compete one day with, with what could be a prim uh, primary situation. So um, I, I see Jeff nodding, as you know, uh, that there are not many. I mean, you could probably count maybe on one hand minority firms that are really, really lobbying firms that are doing well or are, are able to compete at that primary level. And I think, again, with the program that we have, we're trying to move those subs to primaries. And I think that an increase in looking at what they're doing across the state allows for that to happen more than, than where we're sitting right now. So, Commissioner Proctor, what I'm asking for simply is that um, we put a 25,000 piece on, uh, from the minority piece on the state contract, that we increase that, that from 70 to 85 and that um, we have the county administrator come back at some point during the year to look at best practices across the state when it comes to our, um, our lobbying contracts at the state and federal level and MWBE participation. I accept that. That's a great um, idea, and it comes closer in proportion to um, our community's uh, 33 34 percent um, minority base, in fact, 40% total minority base in Tallahassee, uh, I'm sorry, in Leon County's total population. So moving that makes the scale of representation of who our county is um, more um, congruent. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. Commissioner Jackson has a seconder of that. Uh, uh, point. Could you, uh, just, or excuse me, Commissioner Maddox? Yes, sir. Could you just repeat that again for me real quick? Again, right now we're currently at 70,000. I'm, I'm, I'm proposing that we increase that to 85. Right. right now, we're currently at 10,000 for a minority. I'm proposing that we increase that to 25. Uh, I'm asking the county administrator to come back 
with information on best practices on MWBE primary lobbying split and that we entertain that at next year and look at it for next year's um, contracts. Yeah, I'll be happy to second that. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Okay, friendly amendment has been made and seconded. Uh, next in the speaker's queue, I've got Commissioner Dozier's, Commissioner Dozier, Commissioner Welch, and Vice Chair Proctor again. Commissioner Dozier. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Commissioner Maddox, I, I guess I need clarification there. So you, I thought you were trying to expand the contract, the current contract. Yes, it's for the current, but I'm asking for information for next year. You want, yeah, information on how we can expand it next year, but you want to increase the amount of the current contract. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Mr. Chair, if, if you don't, I do want to get back to um, one issue um, more substantive issue on our legislative agenda, but I'm going to stick with the contracts for right now since we have a motion on the table and then we can circle back around to that. Would that be acceptable? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, all right. So um, for the contracts, um, I actually had to go back and remind myself a little bit of what we did a few years ago. Um, Mr. County Administrator, I think you've said in briefings, you've said it in the item, um, we have, it, it, you feel like we've had a lot of benefit from our federal um, lobbyists over the last couple of years, and they have worked through American Rescue, um, CARES Act, but also a lot of work with the agencies, um, which is a part of the way we expanded their contract in 2017. You, you think that has been valuable, is that correct? That's correct. They do an excellent job for us. And we do benefit from that work directly with agencies. I mean, we, I've, I've worked with them years ago with the ACE program through Economic Development Administration, but um, we've seen a lot of work throughout the year. It's not just congressional appropriations, but it is the, the agency work that has been helpful, yes? Absolutely. That, that part was, has always been contemplated in their contract. Where it was expanded was specific to um, if we needed their assistance in writing the grants. Yes. And so, uh, which we've used not as frequently, but they've always been great uh, with us working through the agency process, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad you hit on that because um, I took a look at our contracts for both state and federal um, when we extended them in September of 19. And um, for those of you who weren't here in 17, um, we went through a few months. The board was split for a time on whether or not we would move forward with our federal contracts um, between December of 16 and then uh, February of 17. And the scope was revised at that time. Even if it did contemplate work with the agencies before that, it did include grants, but it was, it was very detailed. And I, in looking at the state contract, I think the scope, and I shared this with Mr. Sharkey, and I should have Thank you all for being here today, and I know our federal lobbyists obviously couldn't travel down, but um, we, we've talked with them as well, um, that the scope could cover that work with agencies, but it, it has not been updated in the same way that we focus on the federal. So um, I'll come back to why I'm mentioning all of this. I guess I skipped over the lead here. There are a lot of issues that come up during legislative session. Bill tracking, budgets, working with the governor's office, and Cap Alliance has done that successfully, and thankfully we actually got a number of projects through this year, and that is fantastic. And I know this is a team effort with our staff um, and others um, in our legislative delegation. And we, you did note in the item that there were meetings with DEP that were set up. My question is, having a third party, having someone who has our backs, has our staff's backs, who are very, very busy, that will be looking for opportunities at DEO, at housing, at other departments on an ongoing basis, FDOT, helping to navigate some of these issues, particularly when there's disaster supplementals coming down or new programs, I think we could really benefit from um, having a more direct engagement with those agencies. So now I come back to the contract, Mr. Chair, and I'm wrapping this part up. Whether it is this year or um, if should we do it next time we um, have an RFP, I would very much like to look at expanding the scope of 
the um, contract and making it more specific when it comes to working with the agencies and looking for opportunities for the county. Final thought here, tying it back to Commissioner Maddox, um, uh, amendment to the motion. I, I really struggle with adding anything like that to a contract. I support the, the idea, for sure, um, to expand minority and women participation. But I struggle with doing that as in, if we're not going to go to an RFP. I mean, even if our incumbent, as they've been successful since for over a decade now and worked well with us, um, continues to work with us for the coming years, I still think we need a new contract that could reflect um, an increase in minority and women participation, and that would give us an opportunity to expand the scope. So again, I have shared this with our Cap Alliance folks um, and let them know that this was um, something I've been thinking about for a few years, so it's not specific to our, um, to our partners at Cap Alliance, but I would like to make a substitute motion um, to for um, option one, two, four A, which would be expanding the or just extending the federal <coughs> contract. They're not lined up um, on the same time frame. And for option three, we direct the county administrator to do a request for proposals, which would be three B. Um, that would allow us to expand the minority and women aspect and expand the scope of those services with more specific focus on agencies. So that's my substitute motion, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Is there a second for Commissioner second. Dozier's? Second. There's a second on the motion. Let me go ahead and, and break for just a moment and ask the county attorney uh, for a legal assessment of this. Uh, the friendly amendment offered by Commissioner Maddox, is, is that something that's legally permissible? Are there any legal issues or concerns with what uh, Commissioner Maddox has proposed? No, Mr. Chairman. Um, under the board's purchasing policy, um, this sort of service would uh, typically be subject to a competitive procurement. However, the board can always vote to move in a different direction uh, and basically waive that policy and contract dire directly with a particular contractor. Okay, great. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, okay. Commissioner, are your comments completed, ma'am? Mr. Chair, I'll just say that um, I think that the minority and women participation is as significant as my thoughts on these expanded scopes, so I would very much like to move forward with it, but I can't support just expanding the contract, um, which goes against our policy, as the uh, county attorney has said. So um, I can get there on the principle, but I think we need to um, rebid it if we're going to expand it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. I've got Commissioner Welch and then Vice Chair Proctor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in no offense to Mr. Sharkey and you guys, but to Commissioner Dozier's point, and I'm new, okay, so for me, I feel like it's healthy and responsible to do a request for whatever, proposals, quotes, whatever, RFQ, RFP, um, whenever you have an opportunity to do this, because it gives everybody an opportunity to kind of reassess as we're talking about whether we're including more money for MWBE or we're expanding the scope of the practice or the, the contract. And so that's why I would second Commissioner Dozier's um, substitute motion. Mr. Sharkey, you guys probably do a great job, obviously. Um, but, you know, the leadership dynamics across the street are quite fluid. Uh, year to year, every two years, certainly. And so, you know, I think it's, Mr. County Attorney, I mean, <laughs> Mr. County Administrator, Madam County Attorney, I'm sorry. Um, can you tell, what is the length of the contract? Is it multiple years or is it one year or of, of the state lobbying contract? Mr. County Administrator. Thank you. Our current contract, as you'll see, has been, it has an initial term with, with uh, optional add-ons. And the board has um, has extended the initial term and, and exercised all the, op the, 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 the optional add-ons, which brings us to this point. And as you can see from the history, we've done that a couple of times. So, for example, right now, uh, we're at uh, 19 years with our uh, federal lobbying uh, contractors and 13 with our state lobbying contracts. But this is the point, once we've exhausted that the initial term and the add-ons, is when we bring this back to you to say, okay, Bid it out, 
or continue. Uh, so what's the term out? that we're? The initial term, Alan, could you tell me, or, or, or Andy, could you tell me the Three initial years term? years with two one-year add-ons. So this is a two-year, this is an additional two-year add-on? Yes. That's what I'm getting at. Which has expired. Right. So we're, we're voting tonight whether to do that another two years or? Another initial term. Or another same, initial under, three years. Under the same term. Years. Gotcha. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I feel in principle about the, the same way about the federal contract. Like, I know these are all capable people, but, you know, at what point do you reassess and take a step back and kind of pivot and try to adjust uh, at least just for the health and sort of, you know, robust nature of, of competitive bidding? So um, n nothing personal, no offense. That would be my reason for supporting uh, Commissioner Dozier's motion. I think it captures the concerns of Commissioner Maddox uh, and myself with just uh, being responsible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Welch. I've got Vice Chair Proctor and then uh, Commissioner Dozier again. I don't hear Commissioner Maddox's uh, request for money being made available that minorities can participate in an area that is exclusively white. That's not what he's saying. Apples should not be mixed up with oranges. We want more money. He want more money. I want more money. If that would induce and allow for those who do lobbying to uh, also uh, afford and accommodate uh, uh, black people to also participate in this field. It shouldn't be an exclusive field. Um, and it certainly shouldn't be an exclusive field of Leon County's money. Because I know that District 1 pays taxes for these lobbyists. So whoever they are, they need to reflect my district, period. Now, lobbying is not like purchasing goods and services and buying bicycles for Christmas. And you try to buy the lowest price, the bestest bike, all of that. What we are purchasing is more complicated. And if we augment it, this contract that Commissioner Dozier is talking about. But we're talking about relationships. It's an intangible. Uh, it's abstract. You, you can't like just open the hood, look under the hood, and go and kick the car tires and slap it and does it go to zero to, uh, from zero to 60 in five seconds. That ain't what lobbying is. It's about credibility, the institutional swag that you purchase from those who have established relationships with those who have power. That's what this is about, power. And who can effectuate from power the desires, the agenda, the mission, the resources that our county needs. And our federal lobbyists have delivered. And when you do the cost-benefit analyses of what we pay and what they return, Ain't nothing to talk about. Now, the theoretics of opening it up every two years, three years, da da da, every two years, that's a different discussion. But we're talking about job effectiveness, it speaks for itself. So my motion expresses a comfort level, knowing that the shifting political sands beneath our feet. Legislative session after legislative session, it gets harder for our community to get money out of mean-hearted, cold-hearted people across the street. And it's hard to create relationships that get phone calls returned and meetings scheduled. And you just can't jump off the box and do that because we're dealing with shifting political sands where the very nature of uh, the rapport of governance has changed. So to my final point, and I saw the red flag, um, um, Commissioner Welch and Dozier, your desire to augment and look at some things and da-da-da, I understand that. But I'm not willing to punish Jeff Sharkey for uh, brilliantly delivering and effectively bringing home the bacon. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. We've got folks that want to speak a second time on this item. Let me go ahead and put in a word. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Welch, Commissioner Dozier, I understand the intent of, of your substitute motion. 
Um, you know, I used to work at a nonprofit, and part of our job was to send mail pieces out for fundraising. And so we would hire a direct mail firm. And a direct mail firm, you, you, the industry expectation is that you should change them every three years or so. You want to keep that, that relationship. Uh, you want to put them on their, on their, on their tiptoes uh, working for you. Uh, because that, in, in, at least in the direct mail industry, that's what you need from your, from your, from your um, uh, consultant. Um, lobbying firms are a little bit different uh, in that there's, as Vice Chair Proctor said, there's a long history. And, um, and the relationships that you build with them and, by extension, the relationships that they have with people at the Capitol and the governor's office are really important on your issues. And so I, I, had, uh, I have a different perspective in that if things are going well, and I believe that they are, um, we have a long history with, with both of these lobbying firms. I think it's to our benefit to continue that relationship because I think um, there, are, there are gains to be had by having that continued relationship. Uh, obviously, if something is not working out well, then we would need to rethink it. But in this case, I believe that's, that's not the issue. So um, with respect, I'm going to vote against the substitute motion. Um, Commissioner Dozier and then Car Commissioner Cummings. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, I'm just going to pick up on your comments there, but also the vice chairs as well. Um, this in no way at all is about punishing anyone or saying that we did not get great service out of both of our um, lobbying partners, federal and state. And I have expressed that um, to Mr. Sharkey before the meeting. Um, this is about an opportunity that exists. And let me be more blunt. I hear about this, as I shared with Jeff, um, at the Florida Regional Planning Council, at FAC, and from, from other commissioners around the state, that there's a lot more proactive work with the agencies than what I see within our contract. Now, I think our staff is doing a phenomenal job. We happen to be in state capital, so they can work directly with DEO or housing or someone else. But having a partner who is authorized and directed to do that work and look for opportunities at those agencies, my concern is not that we are doing a bad job, far from it. It's that we're leaving something on the table. Secondly, if we're going to expand the contract for minority and women, I simply don't think it is fair or appropriate to do that without issuing an RFP. So I make this substitute motion as taking advantage of an opportunity, and I welcome Capital Line's response to that RFP should it move forward. Um, last thing I'll say is just in response to my second, uh, Commissioner Welch, um, I thought a lot about the federal versus the state. Because we worked through the contract so much over those few months between 16 and 17, in, in the winter of 16, 17, um, and the cycles are a little different. We're in the middle of the infrastructure bill. Where they have been exceptionally helpful on American Rescue and Stimulus, and this is not saying anything as comparison with state, but I don't see the need to revise that federal contract in the same way right now. So. Again, this motion is about taking advantage of opportunities going forward and not wanting to leave anything on the table. And let's be clear, Capitalines has won this contract three times running, um, I believe, or we've extended it. So um, their chances are pretty good. Um, but there are also other firms. We would never want to prejudge something like that. Um, so I, I do take issue with my motion challenging the effectiveness. This is about other opportunities and making sure we are in line with our own policy should we wish to expand the contract. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Uh, Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just need, I guess, clarification. Is the motion on the floor, the substitute motion by Commissioner Dozier, does it involve both federal lobbyist contract and state lobbyist contract or just federal? Commissioner Dozier. No, ma'am, it's just the state. Um, oh, just the state. Just the state, yeah. And again, as I said, only because we work through those contract issues with the federal so much between December 16 to February 17, that was the only reason. Thank oh, okay, you. and then one other point of clarification, Mr. Chairman. Um, Commissioner Maddox, initial motion regarding WMBE and adding Increasing 
the contractual amount from seventy thousand to eighty five thousand. Is that the, just the state contract as well? Yes, just the state. So we are just basically discussing the state contract. Okay, and whether or not to bid it out or to retain the lobbyists that we have. Essentially, yes, ma'am. So uh, Commissioner Dozier's uh, substitute motion seconded by Commissioner Jackson would be option two, I mean, option one, option two, option four, right. and then 3B. I think you got a wrong second. Oh, is that correct? It was the second by Commissioner Welch. I'm sorry about that. You're, my, my mistake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Commissioner Cummings, do you have any other questions, ma'am? No, I think they clarified it. Thank okay, you. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the, the vote on the substitute motion made by Commissioner Dozier and seconded by Commissioner Welch. Uh, all is in favor of the substitute motion, say aye. Aye. Uh, can, uh, can you raise your hand, please? Okay, the motion is, uh, and all those, in, all those opposed, say nay. 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 Okay, the motion fails uh, two to five with uh, Commissioner Dozier and Commissioner Cummings uh, in support of the motion and the rest. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Commissioner um, Dozier and Commissioner Welch in support of the motion and the rest uh, opposed. All right, so we are now back to the um, a motion originally made by Vice Chair Proctor, seconded by Commissioner Jackson with the friendly amendment. Yes, Commissioner Dozier. Mr. Chair, um, can we... Um just like a bit more clarification from the county attorney again. I know you asked the question about our policy. Was there anything, forgive me, ma'am, did you say we had to waive our policy or we could just take action um, to expand the contracts despite the policy? Madam County Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so an action by the board to authorize staff to contract directly with a particular vendor is a waiver of your policy. So, okay, so the, the vote itself is a waiver of the policy. Um, I guess I'm questioning, we have a scope, we have 70,000 contract. What are we, I mean, is there additional work or there something else or this is just to add one more vendor or could it go for the same vendor, I'm, it's just adding, or expanding from 10,000 to 25,000, so I'm a little confused about what the goal here is other than simply hiring one more vendor to expand our lobbying team. Commissioner Should we Maddox. not put any scope on that for what we want those folks to work on? Uh, well, see, well, six years ago, I think, we had this conversation and we, we went up to allow for a minority piece on the contract. Now, I don't, I mean, I don't personally care how we get there. I mean, we can stay at 70 and, and, and still allocate 25 towards a minority if that's what y'all want to do. But I believe that um, the work that's done warrants a little more in a contract to be able to go towards a minority to get a quality firm. And so that's why I added the increase there. But if it's the will of the board to stay where we are and allocate 25, my interest is in making sure that the minority piece is increased because I don't think it's adequate enough to give you know, a minority firm, 10000 for the work that they would have to do at the state level. Um, now, that's not an increase of scope, but think about it. I mean, if you're really doing the work, and I believe Mr. Sharkey is tasking his minority piece with actually doing the work, are they doing more than $10,000 worth of work at the state level? And I, I would say that they are. I think, I think the value is more than $10,000 for a minority firm in that piece. So we can do it either way, but my, my way was to increase and actually make the allocation or that suggest allocation. Okay, Thanks. so just to be clear, you're you're saying expand that allocation for um, the subcontractor, if you will, that they're they're already working with, not to hire someone new and for the existing scope. No, my 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 increase is for a minority business. Now, whoever he chooses to hire is his business. I have no problem with that. That's 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 on him. I can't I can't make that decision for him. But whatever minority he does hire will make $25,000 if this vote shall pass. Okay. Um, again, I support it in principle, but I think this is a substantial amendment to our contract. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioner Dozier. Seeing as we have no other speakers in the queue, we'll go ahead and move to the vote of the uh, motion made by Commissioner Proctor, seconded by Commissioner Jackson with the friendly amendment. Anybody need us to restate the motion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the motion passes 6-1 with Commissioner Dozier in dissent. 
Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next item? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. yes, Commissioner Dozier. We're going to come back to other legislative issues. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my, my mistake. Uh, Commissioner Dozier. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I want to thank Bruce Chase. Um, I'm not sure if she's still here. She may have walked out. Uh, for her comments on the For the People Act. Um, we did receive a large number of emails, um, considering the other emails we got, um, asking us to uh, issue a resolution in support of HR1. Um, she mentioned SR1, but I, I wasn't sure we had a Senate companion yet. Um, I, what I'd like to do, Mr. Chair, is there are two, there's so many issues on election laws. As she said, there's 22 states working on these laws, and we know that the bill in Florida has already passed. Um, Supervisor Early has been holding training sessions for um, folks who do petitions and other things like that, and, and th there's some real impacts. I mean, there are fines if they, the example to me was if they turn in one petition with a Gadsden County address, they can get fined um, just as a mistake in, in turning in those petitions for Leon County. Um, so I really appreciate Supervisor Early's work, and then uh, the League of Women Voters and others have issued a lawsuit against um, the state um, about some of the provisions in uh, the Florida bill. So what I'd like to suggest, and I, I can make this as one motion, Mr. Chair, but it's kind of two agenda items, I think. One would be bringing back an agenda item in July to look at a resolution in support of the For the People Act, um, H.R. 1. And the second agenda item would be to have an update on the new Florida elections law um, with information from Supervisor Early about how it will impact our community and from the League of Women Voters in case there is anything we can do to support their efforts. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion made by Commissioner Dozier and seconded by myself? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Uh, Commissioner Dozier, thank you very much for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce uh, item 22? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, item number 22 seeks board authorization to execute an interlocal agreement to provide the Children's Services Council of Leon County with a loan of up to $400,000 for its first year of operating expenses. Commissioners, this comes at the formal request of the CSC uh, as discussed in the item, it is not uncommon for a county to provide startup funding in the form of a loan uh, to a CSC prior to their collection of property tax revenues. Staff uh, recommends uh, option one, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, I'm also, of course, very happy to, to defer to your, to your designee on the CSC, Commissioner Cummings. Uh, we are recommending option one, and commissioners, I was just looking very quickly to see if we have any speaker cards, we do not have any speaker cards on this item, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. I've got Commissioner Maddox and then Commissioner Cummings. Commissioner Maddox. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Attorney, the Boys and Girls Club, the Big Ben, could possibly uh, receive funds from the Children's Services Council. Uh, <coughs> does that put me at conflict on this vote? No, Commissioner Maddox. Uh, any determination by the CSC as a separate body to allocate any funding that they receive from whatever source is no direct conflict to you. But you may choose to recuse for the perception of conflict if you wish. No, oh, ma'am. If there's no direct conflict, I trust my attorney and I'll go ahead and vote out. I just wanted to put, the, put, on, put that on record and I'll <laughs> yield to Commissioner Cummings for a recommendation on uh, this item. Thank you, Commissioner Maddox. Commissioner Cummings. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move uh, approval, adoption of option one. All right. Uh, motion has been made for option one by Commissioner Cummings, seconded by Commissioner Maddox. Uh, any other comments, uh, Commissioner Cummings? Uh, yes. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman, I just want to, on behalf of our chairperson, Jess Serstrom, um, and the Children's Services Council, I want to thank uh, the county administrator and his staff for working with uh, Judge Sistrom in creating, uh, hopefully, what this board will approve is a loan to the Children's Services Council. We uh, recognize the, <clears throat> the vote of the citizens in Leon County, recognizing that the children do. There are some issues that 
that do need to uh, be addressed. And we want to be able to address those expeditiously, and this loan will allow us to move forward until we're able to collect funds from the taxes, hopefully later this fall. So thank you so much, and I certainly hope that the board will approve this, uh, this loan. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Cummings. So the motion on the table is uh, option on the floor is option one, made by Commissioner Cummings, seconded by Commissioner Maddox. All in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, unanimously 7 0. Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next item? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this item seeks ratification of the board actions at your May 25th fiscal year 2020 2022 budget workshop concerning the development of the FY 22 tentative budget. Options 1 through 23 reflect those actions, Commissioners, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have or receive any additional direction at this point in the process that the board may have for us. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Uh, Commissioner Maddox, Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Proctor, and then Commissioner Dozier. Commissioner Maddox, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe, Mr. County Administrator, the conversation that we had and the reason we had to come back. And you got a speaker. Do you want a speaker to go first, Mr. Chair? Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have one speaker on this item, Stanley Sims. Mr. Sims, welcome back, sir. Please, uh, once you come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Is this National Skip Stanley? Dang, y'all skip me three times now. This is Stanley Sims, 1320, Avondale Way. I want to speak on this budget issue because we got to really, truly think how we invest in communities of color. We are here today because <coughs> I look to this municipality for leadership. I look to this, this, this body here for integrity in this county. So what am I saying? We need a fair process, a clear process. I don't know what y'all reading on those computers, but I really would appreciate some eye contact. That's kind of disrespectful. I don't get but three minutes. And the way that I have to fight to get resources into communities of color is unacceptable. But guess what? I'm not just fighting from down here. I see Commissioner Na Nick Manos just today fight up there. He understands that we in communities of color are not getting the necessary equity, equity of our taxpayer dollars. It's acceptable for utility poles to be in narrow sidewalks in Frenchtown, because if it wasn't acceptable, your burning passion would mention it. It's acceptable in Frenchtown for not one tree, but six, six with fresh scars, fresh, fresh scars where cars hit them on heavy roads. We won't talk about that because those kind of things are not acceptable where I live in Buck Lake. They're not acceptable in Kalarna States because they vote. Well, thank the Governor DeSantis. We didn't start voting, but there's a suppression of the vote. And your budget needs to rethink how it invests in communities of color. Because we are being shortchanged. And when you fake like you're reading something, I think I'm being ignored. And then I become a protester. And then Governor Santez says, whenever I become a protester, I can go back to being an ex-felon. I'll go back to being a felon. Thank you very much, Mr. Sims. All right. In the speaker's queue, thank you very much, Mr. Sims. We've got Commissioner Maddox, Vice Chair Proctor, and then Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move options 1 through 23. Thanks, staff, for coming back with information. I believe this, we brought this back for ratification on the um, 
on the general business <coughs> agenda to speak specifically about the uh, uh, 13, 14, or 15 dollars an hour for our for our employees. And so I want to thank staff for coming back with the information. And um, I'm okay with sticking with the 14. So I'll uh, move options one through 23. Okay, options have been made for options one through 23, uh, made by Commissioner Maddox, seconded by Commissioner Dozier. Um, Commissioner Maddox, are your comments finished? Yes. Okay. Um, to Mr. Sims, thank you for, for speaking today. I want you to understand that you got some very talented people up here that, that may be looking at different places, but hear every word that you had to say. We do the best we can to try to make sure, sure, especially at the county, that we're fair about the way we allocate our resources. To make sure that we're not just, and, and I think you can, you can pretty well say this about me, that we're not just uh, giving to the majority, but we're making sure that the minority gets a piece of those dollars, an adequate piece of those dollars. We fight to do it every single day. So, uh, But it takes people like you coming up and saying what you had to say today to, keep, to hold us accountable and keep it in the front of our minds that that piece has to be a part of what we do each and every day. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, Stanley. You're doing better. I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Maddox. I've got Vice Chair Proctor and then uh, Commissioners Dozier and Cummings. Commissioners, um, we've had a chance to duke it out on the, on, on these issues. And, um, there are no surprises. Uh, options 1 through 23. Uh, I wanted to uh, cast uh, another echo upon uh, option three and to say that while I recognize your reticence to go there uh, but I was fully prepared Commissioner Maddox to go to fifteen dollars um, and not um, I think that the article um, in Sunday's New York Times um, bespeaks the um, competitive nature of the workforce right now um, I understand that the city of Tallahassee has gone there $15. And I'm not sure if $15 is the uh, is a, a democratic idea or if it's been polarized as a number that represents um, um, a liberal position in politics. Um, it has some characterization to it, and I'm, I'm not a, a psychologist or nothing, but um, it's like we're afraid to, to go there. And um, um, there's nothing wrong with paying people to be competitive. Also, I wanted to point out that you saw the article last Sunday, uh, which mentioned Joe Manasa, that uh, in our community, only the top 10% of our population, of, of our market, he said, are able to uh, engage in uh, purchasing a new constructed home. 90% of our local community, 90, uh, cannot engage the prices of new homes. Uh, $14 certainly does not make uh, anyone any closer to attaining what Maslow said was a basic human need, food, clothing, and shelter. And I think that uh, next year we will be aggressive, and I um, well, next year will um, ask this commission to step up and for us to go there to $15 an hour. It's a, a national uh, trend. Uh, it, it, it speaks to our levels of understanding our humanity, as well as recognize the struggling uh, families uh, who work in the jurisdiction of which we have power and control, and that's Leon County's government. So those things being said, this was a wonderful round of, uh, of uh, presentation from the county uh, administrator, the leadership, and um, divvying up this budget. And um, hopefully this is going to be uh, uh, a year in which will be memorable to the citizens of our community. So I thank staff for their hard work on this effort. And um, I do want for the echo of my voice to resonate on option three. We need to go to $15 next year. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. I've got uh, Commissioners Dozier, Cummings, and Maddox. Commissioner Dozier. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do support the motion. Good <coughs> conversation about 14 and 15 dollars an hour. I think we are in the appropriate posture with 14, and I'm glad we have had this conversation. I'm glad we expanded it. Um, I also wanted to note that um, it asked for a little more information on the allocation for homelessness and housing, um, what might be allocated very soon, and what might um, be up for discussion as part of our July 13th workshop with the city. And Mr. County Administrator, I just wanted to thank you for that detail that you added in the item. Um, I, I think we're in the right posture with the emergency shelters um, moving forward and some other things, and then the rest of it being part of that discussion on the 13th, and I appreciate um, been, been continuum of care. It looks like you all coordinated um, on how to separate that allocation. So thank you. This was, um, we had a full day discussion on this, as um, I think Gary Zirin said, the longest budget workshop that he'd been, uh, that he'd attended um, in many, many years. Um, so thank you all for the great work, Mr. County Administrator, for you and your entire team. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. I've got Commissioner Cummings and then Commissioner Maddox. <clears throat> Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to just just emphasize that um, I believe that that we have taken a, a great step, and I think we have established <clears throat> in agreeing to raise the minimum wage of our of our county employees to fourteen dollars an hour. We've demonstrated that we are concerned about the livelihood of, of our citizens. We, we are leading, uh, we need to lead uh, by example. Um, arguably $14 uh, an hour in Leon County might not be a livable wage for a family of six or a family of eight, but I believe in, in elevating it to $14 an hour, we've taken the first step and like Commissioner Proctor says, hopefully next year, um, you know, we can take another step or a giant giant leap, so to speak, leap, so to speak. Uh, our overall budget, um, I want to thank the county administrator and his staff of all the background that they give us <coughs> meeting after meeting on every, on every item. And while we try to do the best we can, there's always room, there's always room for improvement. And I appreciate uh, Mr. Sims coming up um, addressing concerns about equitable expenditures throughout throughout the county, and I think we, you know, there's work to to be done. But I think we work at it. We do the best best that we can to demonstrate to all the citizens that we are sensitive, and that and that we are concerned, and that will be another day, and we'll keep trying to to get it better. But we need citizens to point it out to us and and uh, prick our consciousness so that we as elected officials can try as best we can to make decisions that will have a positive impact on our citizens, the greatest good for the greatest number. So uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Thank you, Commissioner Cummings. I've got Commissioner Maddox and then Commissioner Welch. Commissioner Maddox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to address Commissioner Proctor's uh, thought there. I, I mean, Commissioner Proctor, I was I was square with you on that 15 and, and Commissioner Cummins as well. I think what, what made me start to think about it is, is we're still coming out of the pandemic. And so um, what I didn't want to do is, is go 15 this year and then look at the budget next year and, and begin to think to ourselves, okay, what, what, what are we going to do? Um, I, I fully anticipate if, if our budget allows for us to be able to go to 15, that we, that we end up there next uh, in, our, uh, in our next budget conversation for next year. My, my philosophy is, and, I, and I've said this to a, a couple of constituents who have asked me, we always need to stay a, ahead of the curve of what we see the number is for our uh, living wage coming from the reports that, that, that are produced by ethics. MIT, correct? Um, I always want to stay ahead of the curve. 14, is allow, 14 allows us to do that. I want to be ahead of the curve also when it comes to us meeting that twenty twenty six fifteen dollars per hour that the state has mandated. And so if, if the budget so works out that we can do that next year, I'm fully for it. Let's move. 
Uh, but but let's 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 slow step it this year because we are coming out of pandemic. We don't know what that budget is going to look like next year. We got we got a couple ideas, but we 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 just don't know for sure. So I'm I'm fully prepared next year to to uh, to get to that 15, uh, and always prepared to stay a, ahead of the MIT curve when it comes to our uh, living wage numbers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Maddox. I've got Commissioner Welch, and then uh, wrapping it up will be Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just. <coughs> Off the topic of the minimum wage, I, I just neglected to thank county staff for um, the dedicated household hazardous waste pickup site um, of the Public Works uh, location. That's I get a lot of people that you know want to get rid of their paint and stuff, and so I think that's a, a, an awesome addition. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Welch. Commissioner Jackson. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I came in on the end of the. Um, wage discussion, so if I'm being redundant, I apologize. Um, I think that um, I did catch um, Commissioner Maddox's comments at the, and um, my good friend, Commissioner uh, Cummings. We're moving in the right direction, and we're well above the, ahead of the curve, and I think we're bound for a um, substantial economic um, um, positive impact uh, that that's um, uh, just around the corner. Uh, I can tell you that there are organizations and um, public service entities in this very county that for them to reach that $14 uh, threshold would cost them millions and millions of dollars. And that is a testament to the preparation that we've made, knowing that this would be coming down the cycle and also appreciating our employees and making a fair and profitable entry level Salary. There are organizations, both at the state level as well as the local level, that are going to have a hard time reaching 14, much less, uh, and for that matter, 13, um, but much less uh, getting to that 15 threshold. So we are, um, I think we're in a really good spot, and that with this type of time left and the uh, impending economic return, return to um, uh, glory days, so to speak, um, we'll be in a good spot then hopefully as soon as next year, as uh, Commissioner Maddox mentioned. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. All right, so we've got a, a motion made by Commissioner Maddox and Commissioner, uh, seconded by Commissioner Dozier for options 1 through 23. Um, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Okay, so I have, I have 528 right now. Um, as you all know, we've got a, um, a scheduled public hearing at 6 o'clock for three agenda items for the county commission. And then um, virtually at the same time, we've got the Joint City-County uh, Comprehensive Plan public hearing on the uh, bike ped master plan at also 6 o'clock, shortly thereafter. Um, we've got a couple different ways we can do this. We can break now, have a dinner break, come back at 6 o'clock, do the public hearings, uh, and then we finish our business at the county. Um, or we could try to, to push on through, try to finish our general business, maybe even do items for uh, county commissioners. Uh, before 6 o'clock and just run through, uh, not have a dinner break, and then once we actually finish our public hearings, then we uh, uh, can then break up. Uh, what's the will of the board? Yes, Commissioner Dozier. Mr. Chair, um, maybe a, a compromise option. Items 24 and 25, I know we've, we've got people in chambers for both of those mm -hmm. items. Um, perhaps we could work through that and then come back to our appointments and comment time later um, so that we do get a short break. That sounds fine by me. Are, are, are okay with that? All right, let's do that. Let's move on. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Dozier. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce item number 24? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, <coughs> as requested by the board at your May 11th meeting, this item seeks board consideration of the Anti-Defamation League's resolution condemning hate and extremism. We have Three speakers joining us by Zoom. Mr. Chairman, if you'd like, I can introduce the first speaker. Yes, sir. The first speaker is Rabbi Michael Shields. Um, people who are joining us on Zoom, again, just a reminder to you that you'll be identified by your name and asked to provide comment of up to three minutes. For those joining by video, you may experience a few second transition as we bring you into the meeting. Uh, when you are asked to speak, you'll be added to the meeting and prompted to unmute your device if you choose to, and if you choose to activate your video, again, you'll receive an automated prompt. Uh, once prompted, please state your name and address for the record and keep your comments to three minutes or less. If you experience technical difficulties, please bear with us. We'll try to resolve those. And with that, again, Rabbi Michael Shields. 
Rabbi Shields, welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, please state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Rabbi Michael Shields, 2113 Doral Drive, Tallahassee, 32312. Thank you for uh, taking up this resolution. I think it's very important. Uh, every year, extremism and hate seem to proliferate and increase, especially in recent years, and they take it takes a deadly toll. The Jewish community knows this. Following Charlottesville, shot following the Tree of Life shooting in Pittsburgh. But no region, no city is immune. Middle East, Europe, and certainly not Tallahassee. And so I do speak as the rabbi of Tallahassee. Uh, in recent days, we, we received an allocation from the Florida legislature and not more than a couple hours after a Facebook post popped up on that news article saying, wow, that allocation could pay for a lot of Jews to go back to Israel, to fly back to Israel. So we know the sting of hate and extremism very well. But Jews are not the only victims. A white supremacist at Veteran Affairs at a Veteran Affairs home in Tennessee allegedly set his African American roommate on fire, then boasted about it on a white supremacist group. Just months before the Tree of Life shooting, another Pittsburgh white supremacist was charged with stabbing an African American man to death while on a quest to visit bars and repeat the N word until being kicked out. In November, a couple years ago, Scott Barrel opened fire at a Florida yoga studio. Why? An apparent spree of misogynistic violence. Extremist and hate-filled violence needs to be addressed. It will not go away on its own. And I am fully in support of love. But love does not conquer all. Hate, extremism, the white supremacist movement is growing and we cannot stand idly by. We also must recognize and all must recognize that hate crimes are significantly underreported to the FBI because of victims not coming forward or by law enforcement agencies failing to report hate crimes. We can and must do more. And this is a symbolic act supporting this statement but hopefully what will follow with public and private and nonprofit partnership will be programs that promote anti-bias, civic education programs, programs within our communities to combat and counter extremist propaganda and recruiting. We can help educate the technology sector and encourage the technology se sector to combat hate and extremism on its platforms. And we can't solve all of it all of this problem, but we can look at our little corner of the world here in Tallahassee. We can think about how we can make Tallahassee a, a holier city. And so, I Rabbi Shields, th thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate it. We reached the three minute uh, limit. Thank you very much uh, for your statement, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next speaker? The next speaker is Lamonte Horn. Hello, Lamonte. Can you hear us? Yes, sir. All can right. you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much for being here. Please state your uh, name and address for the record. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Lamonte Horn, and my address is 4434 Gerhard Road. It is my understanding the resolution for you today is being driven by a request from the Anti-Defamation League. I also understand resolutions are used by the board to inform citizens of the commission's policy positions. The acts committed on January 6th was something I never thought I would witness in our country. And I believe racism, <coughs> bigotry, and hate are mechanism of and for evil and should have no place in civilized society. Local governments have a key role to play in the promotion and protection of human rights. One important function of local government is to provide public services that address local needs in relation to the realization of human rights. One of government's sole responsibilities is to provide parameters for the everyday behavior of citizens 
and at times to protect us from ourselves. I was pleased to hear during my interview with Ms. Peoples that Leon County is engaged in activities to bring forth understanding in this area. Communication is key to everything we do to remove barriers and encourage community collaboration to solve our issues. It is my hope if the resolution is adopted that it will serve as a tool to encourage greater communication and not division. Anti-Christian hate should also be included in this resolution given the shootings and the burnings of places of worship within our country. Therefore, if all forms of hate are not denounced, the, the resolution should be voted down. We do, not have, we do not all have to agree on everything, but we should encourage a forum for open discussion to better understand each other to overcome stereotypes as well as all forms of prejudice and hate. On another note, I would like to make mention of the level of professionalism and great customer service I have received during all interaction with county staff. This is a part of a class assignment for the public policy leadership course I'm enrolled in. And I would like to thank Ms. Heather Peoples for taking time out of her day to speak with me and answer all my questions because it was a great conversation and she is a delightful person. I would like to also thank each of you for your service to our community and your leadership during a very difficult time. Again, thank you and those conclude my comments. Mr. Horn, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, for joining us this evening. Um, thank you, sir. Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next speaker? The final speaker, Eric Ross. <laughs> Mr. Ross, thank you very much for uh, for joining us this evening. Uh, please uh, state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman Miner, Vice Chair Proctor, Commissioners Cummings, Dojois, Jackson, Maddox, and Welsh. My name is Eric Ross. I live at 5323 Northwest 119th Terrace, Coral Springs, Florida. Uh, and I am the Senior Associate Regional Director for the Anti-Defamation League's Florida Regional Office. EDO was founded in 1913 on a mission which we still have today, which is to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to secure justice and fair treatment for all individuals alike not just for the Jewish community, as an earlier speaker today claimed. ADL has been dedicated to combating anti-Semitism, prejudice, and bigotry of all kinds, as well as defending democratic ideals and promoting civil rights. ADL has long been recognized as a leading resource on effective responses to violent bigotry. Our ultimate goal is a world in which no group or individual suffers from bias, discrimination, or hate of any kind. In the wake of the January 6th siege on the U.S. Capitol, Americans are understandably worried about extremism and political violence. They want to know how bad things are and how bad they might get. The first step to address this is to acknowledge the nature and magnitude of the problem. The second step is for us to use our voices to send a clear and unequivocal message that hate and extremism simply have no home in our society. Unfortunately, we cannot legislate, tabulate, regulate, or arrest our way to a healthier and more accepting society. However, the resolution before your commission today is an important step in the right direction. Not only does it condemn violent extremism, it also asserts that bias and bigotry will not be tolerated in our communities. This resolution denounces anti-government extremism, white supremacy, racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, Islamophobia, anti-LGBTQ hate, ableism, and all hateful speech and bias motivated violent actions and denounces extremist conspiracy theories, misinformation, and disinformation that undermines democratic institutions and processes. And to be clear, for those who have concerns, by including a catch-all of religion in this resolution, yes, anti-Christian extremism, or hatred against any religion for that matter, is very well covered by this statement. In closing, Thank you for considering this important resolution. I urge each of you to send a resounding message to all of Leon County's residents by voting in favor of it today. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Ross. Mr. County Administrator, do we have any other speakers who wish to uh, who have signed up? That concludes our speakers, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Um, in the speaker's queue, I've got Commissioner Dozier. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with a few comments to follow, I'd like to make a motion for option one to adopt the resolution. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the speakers, and I, I want to acknowledge that we did have one speaker who was, had concerns about this resolution 
um, under uh, unagended speakers or unagended items at the beginning of the meeting. So um, we have heard different perspectives on this. Um, I, I did take note that we include religion in general. And I think, you know, it's fair to say that all religions should be included. Hate can be directed in all different ways. Um, so I do think the resolution um, captures that um, concern that we heard from some folks. Um, I do want to thank the ADL and Herc, Barbara Goldstein's here with us today, um, for their work and Rabbi Shields particularly for joining us. It, it is significant to hear that just after um, Temple Israel received an allocation from the state last week, he saw Facebook posts um, that were uh, concerning, <coughs> for sure. Um, from my perspective, this goes back to 95 in the federal building in Oklahoma City. And that was the time when we should have started talking about <coughs> domestic terrorism and extremist hate in this country. It is not about the fact that the folks who committed that were white supremacists and had a form that they considered Christian identity movement. It, it's no comment on Christianity in general. Um, I think most of us can distinguish that. So we are really talking about the extreme of the extreme that doesn't want to debate in a, you know, in a civil way in the public square. This resolution is exactly in line with what we focus on with Created Equal and so much of what we do as a county. So I'm really proud that we're moving forward with it and thank you for bringing it up. Appreciate it, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Dozier, uh, Vice Chair Proctor, sir. I would ask that on the uh, the be it resolve the be it resolve part that we would strike the word be it ordained by the Board of County Commissioners of Liam County and it lists those nine things that we have ordained and I would be more comfortable if we would use the word declared or ordered or uh, supported. Um, I don't think that we have ecclesial authority to ordain. And uh, it's just a word that I believe if um, we could, if you're comfortable, I would prefer us not use the word ordain. Commissioner Proctor, me being a fellow man of the cloth, I asked ask the same too. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I was, uh, I was so focused on so many other things. Commissioner Proctor, that is an excellent catch. And normally our resolutions, I believe, say be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners. And I think that is a excellent change and in line with um, how we resolve to focus on significant issues. Okay. That would be an amendment to the motion. Mm -hmm. Sure. If so you will accept that for the amendment. I'll, I'll accept that as the one who seconded the motion. Thank, Thank you, you, Vice Chair Proctor. Okay. Anything else, sir? Vice Chair Proctor. No. All right. <clears throat> as as um, people have noticed, I mean, we we've had a a very concerning rise in the um, amount of hate speech and extremism and violent actions both nationally and, and here locally. Um, as Rabbi Shield said, it won't go away on its own. Um, and in fact, by being silent, any of us, <laughs> citizens in Leon County, here, uh, county commissioners here at the dais, by being silent, we normalize that behavior. And so that's why I think this resolution is so important and uh, very proud that, that, um, that uh, the county commission here is, is, uh, is adopting this. Uh, before I have the motion, but I, I expect it'll be adopted. So I'm really grateful to uh, uh, to the Board of County Commissioners for considering this. Um, all those in favor of the motion as stated, made by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by myself, um, with the friendly amendment made by Vice Chair Proctor. Um, Commissioner Jackson, do you have a, a comment? No, sir. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously 7-0. All right. Well, it is uh, 5.44 right now. Do you want to press on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what Mr. Sims wants to do. How about uh, anyone else want to press on for continue on? Okay, here we go. Thank you, Mr. Sims. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce item number 25? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This item provides a status report on the CRA's recent actions regarding arts, culture, and heritage grant program and seeks the board approval to award the $1.8 million for the revised TLA TLH Arts Incorporated Performance and Rehearsal Space Project at the new location uh, in the Railroad Square Arts District. Commissioners, you will recall that uh, the board requested that the CRA 
uh, consider this request, which they have, and is reflected here before you today. And in accordance with Florida statutes, we are proposing that the uh, uh, that the, uh, the, with the let me start that part over. In accordance with Florida statutes, um, it requires that the multi-purse assembly and performance venue be publicly owned, uh, and uh, in order to use tourist development funds for constructions. And so, this item also recommends that the city take ownership of the property being donated for this project. We're recommending options one and two. Happy to answer any questions. And we have three speaker cards on this item. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. County Minister. How many? Three. Okay. Would you please introduce the first speaker, please? The first speaker is Jake Kiker. Uh, thank you all. I, I, I'm here just to uh, actually answer questions for CLHR. Uh, there's not a presentation, so uh, again, understanding time is of the essence. I'll be happy to uh, re refrain and from the further com uh, comments and for any questions. Thanks. Great. Great. Thank you, Mr. Kiker. The next in-person speaker, I should have noted, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we have one in addition to the two remaining in person. We have one uh, Zoom speaker. Uh, but the next in person, uh, Adam K. Mr. K, thank you very much for being here. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. And you have three minutes. Adam K, six one eight McDonald Drive. Um, a wise man once said, "Art has the power to uplift you." Amen. That was Rick Miner. That was just uh, about an hour ago, actually. <laughs> Okay. Well, the TLH Arts Inc. project has the power to uplift artists. See, a lot of people enjoy art, but they don't recognize what it takes to produce that. Artists are members of our creative economy. We, the United States, is entering an information era, a creative era. Manufacturing is not what it used to be. And so this proposed facility does that. It brings tourist dollars of the four different hotels already built, one more on the way, into the pockets of our creative economy. These are not just any dollars, these are performing arts dollars. Since I was probably that big, I remember of the Performing Arts Center being built. This is not a performing arts center. This pales in comparison with what we need, but it's a step in the right direction. And that is why my sister and I are willing to donate this site to the public for the creation of this facility that will serve our community. Now, final comment here is it is sad that this project, this allocation of funds has created so much division amongst arts organizations and cultural organizations that all deserve this. This is not enough attention being given to our creative economy our need for culture, heritage, and arts. So I trust that you all will vote today to keep performing arts dollars in the performing arts, help our creative economy, respect artists as professionals, and also uh, accept this donation from my family. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. K. Next speaker, please. The next speaker is Stanley Sims. Mr. Sims. Uh, you know the drill, sir. Please uh, state your name and address for the record. And you have three minutes. My name is Stanley Sims. I'm at 1320 Avondale Way. Commissioner Maddox, Commissioner Cummins, it's this very issue right here that I want to talk about. The Bible says that with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? Commissioner Doja, I've been tagged with saying it's easy to vote no where you don't go. I was guilty of that. I was opposed of this project not because of whether it was viable or not, but because of a lack of a fair process, a fair, transparent process, a process that promotes equity and not equal. But what Adam did, he reached beyond my no and invited me down there, Commissioner Minor. He reached past my 
untraditional, eccentric self. The Bible said he reached beyond my faults and supplied my needs. I went down there, Commissioner Welch, that Saturday. Commissioner Cummins, I was amazed at the number of people, the number of inclusion, the number of the amount of diversity that's going on up under my nose. So I come to support this. And I will not throw the baby out with the bath. Because Adam did something that you need to do. Is reach beyond whatever that turns you off from us where you can't come and see our concerns. Adam brought me to his concerns. He took me there. And he understood that just because I'm pro-black does not make me anti-white. And he's educating me that I understand that when I want to do something, it's a lot hell of a easy, excuse me, Carol, I mean, Commissioner Cummins, it's easier for me than it is for you. But I'm willing to reach out and to share some of my privilege. I wish we had a lot of more white folks like Adam. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Mr. County Administrator, do we have any other public speakers? Yes, we have one uh, speaker joining us by Zoom, Max Epstein. Mr. Epstein, thank you very much for coming. Please uh, state your name, name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Hello, this is Max Epstein, 1001 San Luis Road. And I'm completely with Stanley. I think this project needs to happen, but you were talking about equity. And I respectfully ask that you pause approving this money until the city and CRA meet in early January, uh, July to discuss the Ashmore's project for a French town project that ranked second in this process. That way, you could potentially have three projects instead of two. You may or may not know, but the French town plan is before the CAC right now. They're asking for 4.5 million and an additional million for 507 West Brevard for Ashmore's. <coughs> that proposal was over a hundred pages long. There were line items and it was good to go. If we had funded it fully then, it would be up and running and we'd have tourist dollars coming to French town. But the city doesn't know if they can fund it. It might happen in five years, it might not. And if you have actually seen my op-ed, this entire process was a giant conflict of interest. And to refer to it as the original grant proposal, all these things have changed. We need to look at this. You know, promises have been made to Frenchtown for the last 20 years. The original arts, culture, and heritage district they deserve funding. So again, I respectfully ask that you, you pause funding the rest of this. And if you look at TLH Arts' proposal, it's great. But it's also $3.4 million and they only have 1.8. This has created a giant um, rift in the arts community because everyone's going after every single penny they can and not sharing. Why can't we come up with an equitable process that funds both projects. That would be the most fair. Maybe having a joint session with the city was a good idea, but this, this money is going to be tied up for the next year, maybe two years for funding. And remember, they already had an opportunity to fundraise. Is it gonna happen? I don't know. There's no, this is a proposal. It's not a, uh, or it's a concept, not a proposal. So I think it should be looked at again. Why would we give money to a project and commit it that doesn't have all the I's crossed, all the T's, everything done already? Have an Ashmore's Frenchtown project and a TLH arts project with all the information, how much the city can give, how much the TDT money can give, and then move forward with a fair and equitable process. That is the most important. 
because the TLH Arts proposal is for a Ferrari. Well, we only have enough money for a Corvette. But Mr. Epstein, still a thank, lot of fun thank you drive. very much. Thank you very much for your, you. your time. I appreciate it. All right, commissioners, um, I know we've got about just uh, five minutes until 6 p.m. when we need to start our public hearings, but uh, is there a motion on this item? All right. Is there a second, Commissioner Dozier? I, I, I second. Commissioner Cummings, okay. Okay, so motion made for option one and two, made by Commissioner Maddox, seconded by Commissioner Cummings. Uh, in the speaker's queue, I've got Commissioner Dozier and Commissioner Maddox. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've got a friendly amendment, and with respect to my colleagues, um, I'll make a substitute motion um, if needed, but um, I hope this will be amenable to you. Um, first, <coughs> I want to just quickly reflect on two things. One, I hope we never see a, another grant like this one with all of the different moving pieces in the process and everything else. This has been very challenging for us and for the community. And um, I think that should be acknowledged. Secondly, there are, there's a lot of work in Frenchtown. Um, I look forward to seeing the plan come back. And hey, as the sole per vote against a county leaving the CRA board, I would welcome the opportunity to revisit that. I'm sure most people won't, but we fund the CRA. And I think working directly with our city colleagues on um, investment in Frenchtown and the other areas of the CRA would be great. That's not the discussion today. The discussion is about the TLH arts proposal, which is what this board um, asked the city to reflect on. Um, I think there's been incredible progress in recent months, so I congratulate TLH arts for that. Um, for Adam and Lily Kay and Railroad Square, phenomenal donation. I mean, for the private sector to step up like this, um, is really significant, and the design looks good. The fund, you know, the amount of money that it's going to take to get this done is less than the original proposal. So I like all of those pieces, and I'm really excited about this. It is a long-standing need. The only thing that I wanted to mention in my um, friendly amendment, Commissioner Maddox, um, is that we are not on the CRA, and when this agreement about the tourism tax was set up, we were a member of that board. And it was contemplated that four county commissioners would be part of developing the details for these plans. And then it come to us for ratification afterwards. We are not a party to that. And yet this project will move forward with county tourism dollars. So I, I think staff's got it in the right posture for the city and TLHRs to work through this MOU. But I would like to ask that when the MOU is complete, it is sent back to the county commission one more time, up or down vote, and that way we can make sure that all of the issues associated with this building, um, I think TLH is going to be successful. But if they weren't, this is a publicly owned building by the city funded through county dollars. And I think we just deserve to see that agreement one last time. I will accept that amendment that it comes back to us after uh, who's left the city. Well, when the city and TLH negotiate that MOU. Oh, it I comes back. Uh, yeah, I ain't got a problem with that. Yeah, I'm sorry? Yeah, I'll accept. You'll accept. Okay. That was my understanding from the county administrator that they'll work that out and then we could see the MOU at the end. Thank okay, you. Okay, so the friendly amendment made by Commissioner Dozier has been accepted by Commissioner Maddox and as well as Commissioner Cummings. Is that correct, ma'am? Okay, great. Thank you, Commissioner Cummings. I've got uh, Commissioner Cummings in the speaker queue and then we'll move to a vote. Commissioner Cummings. Mr. Chairman, just very, very quickly and very brief, briefly, I just want to thank uh, the City Commission for doing what we asked them to do a couple of months ago. I want to thank uh, Mr. Cage and his sister for uh, agreeing to donate uh, property so that TLH can, uh, can realize um, <coughs> the, the proposal that they are uh, setting forth that will greatly enhance our arts community here in, um, in in Leon County. So I just want to thank the commission, and I'm certainly ready to vote. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Cummings. All right. All those in favor of um, uh, options one and two, right? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Made by Commissioner Maddox, seconded by Commissioner... As Pardon? As amended. As amended, yes. Um, made by Commissioner Maddox, seconded by Commissioner Cummings, amended, um, friendly amendment by Commissioner Dozier. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 
Motion passes unanimously, 6-0 with, with Vice Chair Proctor out of Chambers. Mr. Kay, thank you very much for your donation of the property, and thank you for your leadership in Railroad Square. You're doing some great stuff with, uh, with the folks there. Thank you. All right, well, we are now at 6 o'clock. It is now time for our scheduled public hearing. Uh, we are double booked. So what we'll do at this point is we will have the, six, the scheduled 6 o'clock public hearings with the three agenda items for the county first, um, and then we'll welcome our colleagues um, to conduct the uh, uh, bike ped master plan for the joint city county comprehensive plan public claim hearing. So, uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the first item for the scheduled public hearings? Mr. Chairman, these should be quick. The three items before you on the public hearings do not have, uh, we do not have any speakers signed up to speak on it. The first item, number 27, uh, is an item that seeks the board's um, or request the board to conduct the first and only public hearing uh, to consider an ordinance amending the official zoning map to change the zoning classification from the single and two-family uh, residential or R3 zoning district uh, to the R4 or urban residential zoning district for approximately 3.34 acres, um, um, a parcel located at the southeast corner of Buck Lake Road and Falls Chase Parkway. Uh, the parcel is in the suburban future land use category. The Planning Commission voted unanimously to recommend this at its May 4th meeting. With that, we're recommending option one. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Is there a motion from the uh, board? Motion for option one. Okay, Commissioner Dozier has moved option one, seconded by Commissioner Maddox. Um, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion uh, stated. Uh, option one by, by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Maddox. Commissioner Cummings, do you have a comment, ma'am? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously 6-0 with Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. Mr. County Administ Administrator, would you please introduce the next item? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this item seeks the board uh, to conduct uh, the first of two required public hearings uh, to consider adopting an ordinance amending the Rural Zoning District to revise the development standards for community service uses to provide greater flexibility and design for these uses on larger parcels. The, the Planning Commission also voted unanimously to approve this project at their May 4th meeting. We're recommending option one, and we have no speakers on this item. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Uh, commissioners, is there a motion for this item? Uh, Commissioner Dozier, I think. Uh, oh, we'll, we'll, let's, 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 let's switch it up. Let's do Commissioner Jackson as the uh, as a motion, and then uh, seconded by Commissioner Maddox. All those in favor of the motion on the table, option one, uh, on the floor, option one, um, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously 6-0 with Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the next item? Madam County Attorney. I'm going to take this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the May 11, 2021 meeting, the Board approved scheduling the first and only public hearing to adopt an ordinance to repeal <coughs> Leon County Amended Emergency Ordinance Number 20-15, which established mandatory face covering... <laughs> Was that... Uh, yeah, Motion by Maddox, second by? By, by Commissioner Jackson, correct? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam County Attorney. Um, any discussion? Commissioner Dozier? Mr. Chair, um, I simply wanted to thank the board and thank our community and our business owners for supporting the mask mandate for as long as we had it in place. Um, we probably would have been, um, we probably would have held the public hearing tonight anyhow given our action to um, schedule a public hearing if the CDC changed its recommendations. So um, we might have been preempted a little bit on that, but this is the right posture, and I think we heard great numbers from Claudia earlier, so um, it's the right step to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. All right, uh, seeing as no other speakers in the speaker's queue, uh, we'll move on to the vote. Uh, the motion made uh, for staff recommendation by Commissioner Maddox, seconded by Commissioner Jackson. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously 6-0. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Uh, we are now moving on to the Joint County City Comprehensive Plan public hearing scheduled for 6 p.m. Um, uh, county Administrator has asked us for the County Commissioners to remain at the dais here uh, and then have the City Commissioners and the Mayor uh, join us on the table down there. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the, uh, the item for the comprehensive plan public hearing? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, this item uh, provides for the joint County City Commission public hearing on the 2021 cycle amendment to the Leon County or to the Tallahassee Leon County Comprehensive Plan adopting the Capital Regional Transportation Planning Agency's Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan by reference. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, we'll hand it off to Artie White. All right. Good evening, Commissioners. As uh, the County Administrator said, this is the uh, last meeting for the 2021 Comprehensive Plan <coughs> Amendment cycle, and uh, we only have one amendment on the docket for tonight. Uh, that amendment is Amendment TTA 2021-004. Uh, this is largely a procedural type of amendment. It would be a text amendment to the mobility element of our comprehensive plan. Uh, this is really about coordination between the adopted Tallahassee Leon County Comprehensive Plan and a uh, plan adopted by the Capital Region Transportation Planning Agency, the CRTPA. Uh, this amendment would create a new policy 1.1.14 as shown on the screen. Uh, a couple things about this amendment. Uh, one is procedural nature. It's about coordination. Uh, I'm aware of some of the public comments that we received, so I'll try to clarify a couple of the misconceptions about it. Uh, first, this amendment is not a blanket approval of all of the projects in the plan. Uh, this amendment does not do that. Uh, those projects would have to go through the appropriate process uh, as they move forward uh, for the major projects that would largely include uh, multiple opportunities for public engagement uh, as it goes through feasibility studies, as it goes through uh, any environmental studies that are needed, design, uh, and all of those kind of phases that happen before construction. So uh, just kind of clarify that. Also, I'm aware that there's some specific concerns about one project, the uh, Thomasville Road multi-use trail project. Uh, I'll note that this amendment actually has no bearing on that project. Uh, if people are concerned about that project, I would encourage them to continue coordination with CRTPA staff as they move through the process for the feasibility study. Uh, but this amendment does not have any impact on that specific project. Uh, note that we are referencing an adopted plan of the CRTPA. So through this amendment, we're not able to add or subtract a project out of the plan that would have to go through the CRTPA's process to amend the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. Uh, and then the kind of final note reading through the public comments uh, is that delaying or denying this amendment does not delay or deny the Thomasville Road multi-use trail project. So um, hopefully that answers some of the questions that we received through the public comment for this amendment. Uh, but again, this amendment would have no bearing on uh, the Thomasville Road project, and it does not blanket approve all the other projects. It would still have to go through the, the process for those amendments. Uh, as we review amendments to the comprehensive plan, we look for consistency with the goals, objectives, and policies uh, of all of the elements of the comp plan. We find this to be consistent, uh, specifically with the overall uh, goal of the mobility element, as, long as, as well as with goal one, Objective 1.2 and policy 1.2.4. I went through this at the workshop as well as the first public hearing on this, so I'll kind of spare, spare you the, the, the details of it, but if you have questions, I'm very happy to answer it. The staff recommendation on this was to find it consistent with the comprehensive plan and recommend adoption. The local planning agency concurred with that. They also recommended that you find it consistent with the comprehensive plan and adopt the proposed amendment. Uh, I have to read the city's ordinance into the record, so I'll do that now. This would be ordinance number 21-0-20, an ordinance of the city of Tallahassee adopting a text amendment to the mobility element of the 2030 Tallahassee Leon County Comprehensive Plan related to the Tallahassee Leon County Bicycle Pedestrian Master Plan providing for severability and conflicts and providing an effective date. Uh, the recommended option for this, which would adopt the proposed amendment, is option one for the county and option two for the city. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. White. Uh, why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and hear from our public speakers, our citizens first, and then what I'll do, um, uh, Mayor, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll pass it on to you as, as our guests uh, to, to, to basically have discussion on the City Commission side, and then we'll take it from there. How's that sound? All right. Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce the first speaker? We have uh, three speakers on this item, two in person and one on Zoom. The first speaker in person, Carol Peck. 
Ms. Peck, thank you very much for being here. Uh, when you come to the microphone, please state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. My name is Carol Peck. I live at 3164 Brockton Way. Good evening, Mayor, Chairman, and Commissioners. I have here a list of 41 projects that are for new bikeways, some sidewalk paths, efforts to connect sidewalks and paths, and bike paths. I guess I could say there might be 42, but um, I, I didn't see the one for um, the Live Oak Plantation that goes from Thomasville, or thinking about going from Thomasville to uh, Timberlane School Road. However, this is not on the table tonight. What is on the table tonight is the proposed ordinance to amend the comprehensive plan to create a policy that supports the implementation of the Capital Region Transportation Planning Agency's Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. And let me just go back a minute to that list that I showed you. The list is projected to cost millions, millions which translates into today's dollars, about 90 million plus dollars. I'll continue on now, thank you. I just forgot to say that. Um, so we're talking about your, your amendment. My assumption is that this text amendment to the comprehensive plan must be approved to allow all these millions of dollars to take place. Is this a correct assumption? You have already approved the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. Does not the fact imply that you support the implementation of said master plan? Secondarily, the proposed amendment states, we'll adopt the BPMP, which is that long bike pedestrian what is the significance of including the master plan by name? To the best of my knowledge and research, I could not find that the Greenway's master plan has a separate policy in the comprehensive plan. Before you, you approve the amendment, I would just like to thank you for indulging me. Thank you for serving our city and our county. I must say that appearing before the, such an august board was not on my bucket list. But there is nothing like, I like having better than new experiences, even at the age of 81. So I thank you for your time. Ms. Peck, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much for coming, ma'am. Our next speaker, please. The next speaker is Larry Gonzalez. Thank you, sir, very much for coming. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Larry Gonzalez, and I live at 825 Greenbrier Lane. Um, I'm here this evening speaking on behalf of the Thomasville Trace uh, Homeowners Association, of which I am currently the president. Uh, our neighborhood is located on the east side of Thomasville Road, uh, directly across from uh, South Ride. Um, Thomasville Trace homeowners are opposed to the creation of a new multi-use path on the segment of Thomasville Road between Benton Road and Metropolitan Boulevard. Our objection is based primarily on the fact that uh, two sidewalks and two bike paths already exist on this segment of Thomasville Road. Previous county commissions had, had the foresight to create these bike paths and sidewalks on each side of Thomasville Road uh, when the road was widened from two to four lanes a number of years ago. At that time, it was necessary to cut down a lot of oak trees and 
accommodate the increased automotive traffic on Thomasville Road. Creation of the proposed multi-use path at this time will require cutting down more large oak trees and thereby eliminating their beauty and shade. In addition, the project will likely require tearing down walls and other entrance structures and landscaping of neighborhoods such as Thomasville Trace. This might be justified if there were no bike paths or sidewalks in this area. However, it is totally unnecessary, costly, and wasteful to remove beautiful trees and landscaping as well as existing entrances to neighborhoods when sidewalks and bike paths already exist on this segment of Thomasville Road. Our residents would not be opposed to a multi-use uh, path being constructed alongside the drainage ditch between our neighborhood and Benton Hills. Um, we, while we're not convinced of the need for a multi-use path given our existing sidewalks and bike paths, if the Commission is intent on building an unnecessary multi-use path, uh, locating it behind the neighborhoods, uh, rather than removing stately oak trees and damaging the beauty of the entrance of our neighborhoods, would be preferable. Thank you very much for your consideration. Mr. Gonzalez, thank you very much for being here. Uh, next speaker, please. The final speaker is joining us by Zoom, Jan Bennett. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, if you could please state your name and address for the record, you have three minutes. I think it's possible you uh, introduced me and I didn't hear you. Uh, well, perhaps now we can we can hear you. Uh, if you uh, thank you very much for participating in tonight's meeting. If you would please state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Got it. My name is Jan Bennett. I live at three one three five Haddam Court, Tallahassee, in the Rose Hollow subdivision. And I came to speak to the proposed ordinance amending the comp plan, adopting the bicycle and pedestrian master plan as part of the plan. Also. After posting my public comments yesterday, I heard from the planning department by way of a phone call from Ms. Christensen, and she gave me a lot of clarification, and I appreciate having heard stated tonight that it is accurate that this plan, approving this plan, does not mean that the individual projects in it are approved by you, and that that will not happen until after extensive public input and public hearings take place. And that's important because next Tuesday, the CRTPA is having a vote to adopt the priority <coughs> projects list of the BPMP, in which the Thomasville Road multi-use project is number two, after one in Monticello, which is number one puts it way up at the top of the list. So it's very comforting to hear that. But it brings me to my next question, which is we came into this almost by accident and have been told repeatedly that there was a lot of outreach, a <coughs> lot of input, and the farther I dug in things, I saw that a lot of items that come to this board have a caveat attached that no public input was received. That concerns me because if the desired outcome of this body is to have the most inclusive and diverse and representative public input on the things that we do, then clearly that no public input was received is telling us we have some work to do in having effective outreach. And I would certainly like to be a part of that and hope you can address what can be done to improve that. I will follow the BPMP closely as it moves forward, starting with that vote at the CRTPA next Tuesday, which I've already signed up to speak to. Uh, after they um, address the projects in Monticello, it looks like Thomasville Road multi-use path is next. And folks, I don't think we need that path. I, I checked on Saturday and I looked at Publix, Hobby Lobby, Home Goods, and Trader Joe's, and there wasn't a bicycle in any of them. And I cannot imagine that this is for anything but recreational use, which is not going to solve our bigger problem of dealing with the emissions and the cars on our 
big thoroughfares. So I thank you very much for your attention, and I will look forward to hearing more about this issue in the future. Ms. Bennett, thank you very much for, for joining us this evening. Thank you for your comments. All right, Mr. County Administrator. Um, <clears throat> That concludes our speakers. All right, great. Thank you, sir. Um, Mayor, let's go ahead and hand it on to you. Thank you. Colleagues, we've heard testimony tonight. For those of you all on CRTPA, please take that in consideration for next Tuesday. Tonight is the text amendment. Let's open it up for comments and motions. Move option number two, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <coughs> option number Option number two is for the city, correct. Properly moved by Commissioner Richardson, seconded by Commissioner Williams-Cox. Seeing no further comment, yes, ma'am. Commissioner Porter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just wondering for the two speakers, if you feel as though your concerns were addressed tonight. I know there was some confusion about what action is taking place. Do you feel like your concerns were addressed? Yes. Ma'am, I'm going. I'm going to need you to get to the microphone, please, so that so that we can record it. That's okay. And thank you because I left sure. my mask here. Well, there you go. Um, I had asked a couple questions. Um, I, it was on, one was a yes or no answer, I believe. If you if you don't remember what it was, I'll be happy to give it. Uh, say that, tell you again what it is. And I have to go look at my notes to ask you what the second one was. But uh, oh, it was having to do with the uh, amendment. The Green Waste Project doesn't have a, a separate policy with their name in it. And so I was just wondering why the BPM, PBM, yes, you know what I'm talking about, um, needs to have a policy to have their name inserted in there as part of this policy. I mean, I, I, I just didn't understand that. The gentleman right behind you, Mr. Artie White, will be more than happy to answer, yes. answer okay. your questions. I can clarify that uh, policy 6.1.2 of the conservation element does adopt the Green Waste Master Plan. Uh, so it is adopted in the comprehensive plan. Where it says Greenway? Yes, ma'am. And what one is that? Because I didn't, I didn't see it out there. In the <coughs> uh, it's 6.1.2 .1 of the conservation <laughs> element. Sorry, I was at 1.61 that was listed in the um, plan there. I have a card. And Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. I appreciate it. I appreciate yes, ma'am. Commissioner Porter, you still have the floor. Um, okay, yeah, please. Mr. Gonzalez, good to see you again. Thank you. Nice to see you. Second I, round of testimony. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. I understand from the, the comments the gentleman made earlier that this is more of a procedural vote. Um, however, I figured since I'm here and you're here, Thank you. uh, I would take the opportunity to let you know how our small neighborhood feels. There are other neighborhoods along Thomasville Road that share our views. And I'm sure uh, you'll be hearing from them, but I, I intend to be involved in the CRPTA's uh, meeting going Mr. forward. Mr. Gonzalez, you are correct. Next Tuesday is, is uh, the CRTPA meeting that I would encourage you to participate in. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And, yeah, I'm, I just wanted to make sure their questions were addressed. And as I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward, I think that this is going to be good for our city and our, and our county. I'm a cyclist and I'm, I look forward to this. I do, you know, moving forward, I do, we've heard from the public about ways we can do a better job engaging. I know some of this was happening during COVID, which was difficult. That's a conversation I want to continue to have, how we can improve on that, but I'm, that's all the comment I have. Commissioner Mallow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've started to receive a lot of um, public engagement on the Thomasville Road corridor, um, especially in the last couple of weeks. Um, so this project's in a feasibility stage right now, but please continue to reach out to our office and let us know um, your positions as we move to, towards a final decision. Thank you. Any further comment on the motion on the table? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, passes unanimously 5-0. we have any other business? Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, over here on the county side, we've got uh, Commissioner Dozier. Commissioner Dozier. 
I'll make a motion for option one, Mr. Chair. Motion's been made for option one, seconded by Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Doge, any further comments? Um, just quickly, um, I appreciate the clarification, already that you provided um, about the, the posture of this plan. Um, <clears throat> you may be able to answer this question more fully than I could do right now, but the, the process to um, <clears throat> construct the plan that CRTPA board has adopted the, or, and will consider next week, but all of those different projects, that was part of a long process um, that, we did, that we hired a consultant to help work on, community input, if I remember, and the primary focus was about connectivity and safety. Am I accurate in kind of my memory of how that plan came together? I don't want to speak for the CRTPA, but Greg's here, so if I say anything wrong, uh, he can correct me. But uh, yes, Commissioner, that uh, project was about uh, enhancing connectivity, looking at uh, comfort levels and safety, and improving uh, both of those, both uh, the bicycle level of comfort as well as safety for pedestrians and cyclists. Okay. Thank you. I, w I wanted to ask that clarifying question because um, we will be taking up the the larger plan at CRTPA, but then we work on all of the individual <coughs> projects. And I think some interesting comments were made tonight about um, looking for alternative routes, perhaps, with the work the city is doing around um, Benton and the parks there. Um, since this plan was focused on connectivity, but also safety, it, it, bike paths don't have to be on the road proper, but <coughs> we want to make sure people can bike from one side of the community to the other safely. So um, I, because that is not a CRTPA project, it's a city project, um, I thought I'd mention it right now because I think that is some an interesting suggestion. Um, other than that, yes, the price tag is quite high. I think we talked about it at the CRTPA board that it would take a long time to um, accomplish these goals, but, um, and Artie, you could just nod if I'm correct about this, I believe I am. Having this plan adopted and the coordination between planning and CRTPA could help CRTPA qualify for federal and state dollars in the future. So it's not necessarily locally funded. Um, it could be, but not necessarily. And you're nodding, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, that's it, Mr. Chair. I'm, I, I think we've made a lot of progress in recent years and glad to move forward. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Seeing other no other speakers in the queue, we'll go ahead and vote on the item. All those in favor of option one, uh, made by, a motion made by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Jackson, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 6-0 with Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. Mayor, Commissioners, thank you very much. I think our work here uh, as a joint uh, comprehensive plan public hearing is done. Go Knowles. Go Knowles. <laughs> Big game tonight. Go Knowles. You all have a good evening. Take care. Thank you for uh, walking over here. Mr. Chair, could we recess for five minutes before taking up our last That's item? That's a great idea. I would second that. Let's go ahead and recess for five minutes. We're, we're, we'll come back at, let's go, let's go full out. Let's go 10 minutes. So we'll reconvene at 640. 640.
Evening, everybody. Uh, seeing as we have uh, quorum in the chambers, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, would you please introduce item 26, resuming our general business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, this item seeks full board consideration of the appointments of citizens to the Animal Shelter Advisory Board, the Architectural Review Board, the Career Source Capital Region Board, and the Tallahassee Leon County Planning Commission. Mr. Chairman, option one uh, seeks the board to appoint a citizen to the Animal Shelter Advisory Board uh, for the remainder of an unexpired term. The eligible applicants are presented for your consideration. Again, it's seeking one candidate, and there are several uh, eligible applicants uh, presented for your consideration in option one. Thank you very much, Mr. County Administrator. Commissioners, do we have any uh, anyone who wishes to make a motion? Option one on uh, item number 26. Uh, no worries. No worries. Miss. I've got page 654. <coughs> yes, Commissioner Dozier. Um. I think we have a lot of great candidates for um, the Animal Advisory Board. Um, I'm, I can certainly suggest a name. I was kind of waiting to see if anyone else had someone. Um, Ms. Kate Brown is, is who I would nominate to fill that position. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioner Dozier. Commissioner Cummings, do you have any well, comments? Uh, yes. I looked at the information and the resumes that we, were, we had been given. Uh, and in the interest of diversity, I, I just nominate Ashante Ajokum. I couldn't pronounce it that well. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you very oh, much. I was con I'm sorry, there's a motion. I'm sorry, oh, but I was no, considering. Wait a minute. I, okay. Thank you for, Mr. Chair, if you would. Yes, Commissioner Dozier. Um, I think diversity is a great perspective on this. And like I said, there are lots of great candidates. So I am easily persuaded. I think Ms. Brown would be a great um, candidate. but. I will withdraw my motion and allow you, Commissioner Cummings, to make the motion if you would like. Commissioner Cummings, would you like to restate the motion, please? Yes, I so move, Your Honor, the appointment of Ashante Adjokum. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Is there a second to that motion? Commissioner Doja will second that motion, ma'am. Um, all those in favor of the motion as stated for option one would be um, uh, Ashanti Adjokum, uh, made by Commissioner Cummings, seconded by Commissioner Doja. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the motion passes unanimously, 6-0, the Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. Moving on to option two. Anyone, anyone wish to make a motion? Yeah, Commissioner Dozier. Mr. Chair, um, because option two and three are both reappointments, could I make a motion for staff recommendation for option two and three? Second. Okay. Uh, motion's been made by Commissioner Dozier for option two and three, uh, as stated in the options. Uh, seconded by, I think I had Commissioner Maddox uh, first on that one. Uh, if not, just the color of shirt he's wearing gives him an edge uh, on his second. That's so, why I took off the jacket. <laughs> Give some attention. Um, any discussion? We do have some discussion here. Uh, Commissioner Cummings, is that, uh, do you wish to speak on this item? Um, I'm sorry. Okay, it's all right. Commissioner Dozier? I'm, I'm, no, I'm, sir, but I'd like to be in queue for uh, option four. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Maddox and then Commissioner Jackson. No, uh, I was going to stick with option four as well. Okay, okay. All right. Um, all right, so the motion on the table uh, is uh, two and three. made by Commissioner uh, Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Maddox for options two and three as stated in the, uh, in the agenda packet. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously 6-0 with Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. Moving on to option four, I've got Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Planning Commission is a big job for any citizen appointee. I mean, all of our citizen boards may, you know, we value our um, membership and the time and commitment. Planning Commission is significant. So anyone who takes the time to do that, I want to thank them for their service. Um, I do have some concerns about reappointment because of 
the number of conflicts Mr. Volpe has had in the past. He has handled each professionally and ethically, so this is no comment on that whatsoever. But we have seen appointments in the past. Um, we've had other members who, over time, have a number of conflicts, and I think it is my desire, at least, to avoid that. So I wanted to state that publicly because this is absolutely not about Mr. Volpe's skill and his service to the Planning Commission. I do appreciate that. Um, but for that reason, I would like to look at one of the other um, uh, candidates. And um, I, I, again, I think we have several good options. So I am willing to um, have some discussion with about these different options. Um, and I guess that for some direction, Mr. County Administrator, there, there's no specifics on skill set or profession um, related to this particular appointment, correct? Correct. That's correct. correct. Okay. okay. Um, so I will lean towards where Commissioner Cummings um, was on our animal services. Um, and for um, Diversity, I would like to appoint Ms. Jovina Parker. Okay. A second. Is that a second, Commissioner Cummings? Thank you very much. Um, any further discussion? Motion made for option four uh, to uh, appoint uh, Javona, Javana Parker, uh, made by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Cummings. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 6 0 with Vice Chair Proctor out of chambers. And that concludes uh, item number 26. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, comments and discussion items. Uh, Madam County Attorney, do you have any items you wish to discuss? Uh, speakers. Oh, I'm sorry, my, my, my mistake. Um, we have at least one speaker, uh, public speaker, who wishes to speak on a non agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that speaker is Rory Reese. Hello, Ms. Reese. Thank you for coming, uh, ma'am. Uh, would you please uh, state your name and address for the record? And you have three minutes. Yes. My name is Rory Reese. I live on Car Lane, which is in District 4. My county commissioner that directly represents me is, of course, um, Commissioner Welch, and I have two um, other at large, Mr. Ma Commissioner Maddox and Commissioner <coughs> Cummings. And thank you for allowing me to speak. I live on Car Lane, which is off of Bannerman Road and Bullheathley, and this area was developed back in the 1970s. And I know a lot has changed in the 1970s. So I'm mainly here to request that you take a look at the comprehensive plan in specific urban fringe zoning. Um, all of you have this designation in your districts, so I did send out an email last week to each of the county commissioners regarding this. Um, our area, like I said, was established in the 1970s, and maybe what worked in the 1970s is not quite working that well right now. Our area is mostly residential now. Um, and before that, there were very few homes in the 1970s on this street. We're looking to preserve the character and integrity of our neighborhood, but more importantly, to protect the health, safety, and welfare, to protect our water that we use to drink, cook, and bathe. Um, part of the problem is, is that the urban fringe, if you look at that designation and the wording of such, it doesn't limit anything about livestock. So, for instance, I live on two acres, my neighbor is on three acres. We could each have 100, 200 cattle, llamas, pot-bellied pigs, goats. There's absolutely no limitation whatsoever. <coughs> and, um, you know, if you live maybe on <coughs> limited acreage, 20, 30, 40 acres, that might be fine. But I think for people that have limited acreage, that's, you know, really not such a great idea. So we would like you to please consider changing the zoning or the wording of urban fringe to limit the number of livestock per acre. And we have met or spoke with a number of county um, officials, many who seem to understand and sympathize with our situation. And um, Artie White, we had spoken with him and we're very impressed with them. So I don't think most people realize, you know, exactly what that is. So I would invite you to drive our lane. It's only about a mile and a half long, one way in, one way out. And um, as someone said before, I, I loved um, the gentleman's quote, you know, that it's um, easy to say no when, you know, you haven't really looked at it. And please just don't look at it on paper, because on paper it may look like we have a lot of room or a lot of area. But as I said, unlimited livestock, um, I just kind of find that unbelievable. Thank you so much. Ms. Reese, thank you very much for coming today. Appreciate it. 
Uh, Mr. County Administrator, any other uh, speakers? There are no uh, additional speakers. That concludes speakers. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to comments and discussion items. Madam County Attorney, any items to, uh, to bring forward? No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, any discussion items? I have none, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on to the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Maddox, <coughs> discussion. Commissioner Dozier. Um, just a couple of comments, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Reese, I thank you for your comments, and I seem to remember, Mr. County Administrator, if, if I'm right here, that when we had that discussion maybe eight or nine years ago, there was a certain commissioner here at that time who, I mean, it's one of the quotes that I'll remember forever. Um, they were talking about goats and having goats on the property, and he actually said, as a former goat herder, um, and that was Commissioner Akinyemi. And it was a remarkable conversation. And I, I do appreciate his thoughts about urban farming and being able to al allow livestock on your property. Um, but I think the number <coughs> could have an impact, particularly in some areas. So, Mr. County Administrator, is that something that, um, well, you're, you're pointing to Barry, aren't you? Okay. I am. Um, that Barry could address. Thank you. Just to see if we can refresh our memories on Yes, I appreciate Barry. that. Come on up, Barry. We'll, we'll ask you the question once you get up. We yeah. know we're catching you flat-footed. Urban fringe provision for livestock. Ms. County Administrator, if you can. Sure. Yeah. Limitations on livestock in the urban fringe. Mm -hmm. we, we differentiate not by the land use category, but rather by whether you're inside or outside the urban service area. Mm -hmm. So our urban ag policies apply inside the urban service area. And the assumption was that agricultural was allowed by right outside the urban service area, which is where UF is designated. Um, in this case, it's my understanding that this subdivision did have some covenants and restrictions that would have limited uh, livestock, but that <coughs> HOA has since disbanded, and uh, so they're turning back to us to, to regulate that sort of thing. Okay, so th thank you. That helps clarify that you, yeah. you could regulate your own neighborhood, and an HOA or neighborhood association could have their own covenants to restrict this. That but, is correct. Okay. Um, I. I think this is, um, I appreciate the discussion. I'm not sure there's any action to be taken tonight, but it's certainly an issue that's going to reflect on, um, Mr. Chair, unless we want to bring back some information from the county administrator. But I think this is an issue um, that I'm going to give some thought to and try to learn a little bit more about as we go forward. So, because it, it is an important issue, but um, we, one size doesn't fit all. There's a lot of urban fringe that is not within neighborhoods like yours. So that's, that is a tough um, distinction, but I'm going to give it some more thoughts. So thank you, Barry. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Chair, the uh, three quick things I wanted to mention is this has been a remarkable month. First time I have seen you all without masks at times. Our first uh, event today or together was the um, groundbreaking for the land trust and the homes on Eddy Road. Um, just really want to appreciate our staff and working closely with all of our partners at um, TLC and the rest of the housing community. That's a very exciting affordable housing project, and it is in District 4. Um, and that's fantastic. I know you mentioned that, Commissioner Welch, before. Um, I also, just a point of privilege for our district, I can't tell you how long the folks in Golden Pheasant and Wynwood and others waited for these bridge replacement projects. This was long promised since Tropical Storm Fay, which was 09, I believe. And to see the images up there, Ms. County Administrator, I just appreciate y'all tossing those into the slideshow. Um, they are finally getting the bridge replacements, and um, I've been tracking some comments on Facebook. I, I really appreciate the work that everyone's, the contractors doing with the neighborhoods to help manage this really challenging project. So thank you for keeping that going. Um, and finally, I meant to mention this one during our legislative discussion, but we, we had spent a long time there. We did have an item on consent about drug-free workplace and um, specifically related to legal medical marijuana not being allowed within or for county employees, basically. I mean, we are a drug-free workplace, and those two issues come into conflict for many employers, not just government, but a lot of private sector, the construction industry, and others. This item came back exactly as I anticipated. It is an insurance issue. It's a workers' comp issue, and we need to be in the right posture with those policies. This is also a federal government 
issue that should be resolved. Um, like my question right at the top of the meeting of the sheriff about the double standard for those who can afford a medical marijuana card versus those who can't and may be charged with a crime. I'm very concerned about this as well, and I think um, it's in our interest and in our community's interest to keep these issues on the front burner. So it's the right policy, Mr. County Administrator, and Madam County Attorney, I know you both worked on this. Um, I appreciate that, and I know it, it could cause some hardship for some folks um, who, you know, want to take advantage of that legal opportunity. Um, I hope we do get traction on the federal end, and I hope we'll keep that on our legislative agenda going forward. Mr. Chair, that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Cummings. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've already touched on it briefly, but as the, the county's representative on the Children's Services Council, I'd just like to report that we have engaged uh, an interim executive uh, director. Next week, we will be hopefully formulating a budget. And we will also, well, we have also adopted <clears throat> procedures uh, and policies for the Children's Services, Services Council. Um, after we formulate our budget, hopefully next week we will look at, at the trim designation and we will, we will also look at um, an RFP for a permanent executive director. So I just wanted to report that we are on, we are on task. I would like to thank the county and um, county administrator Long for working with um, Jess Sistrom, who is our, our chairperson, so that we can get things moving um, and get the council off the ground. So I think we're well on the way for doing that, Mr. Chairman. If anybody has any questions about the council, but uh, hopefully every month I will bring a report to this body on what we're doing. That's thank great. You. Thank you. Commissioner Cummings, thank you for everything you're doing on the CSC. It really thank is you. A, an important, uh, important effort and uh, really happy to have you on that, on that council. I'm glad to be on there. I've got a couple other things I'd like to mention. <clears throat> I know what's wrong with my throat. Um, Mr. Chairman. There are a couple of community uh, organizations that I'd like to just give kudos to, especially during this time of COVID, this last year. We've all been faced with COVID. Uh, the first um, organization is Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. Um, well, I'll, let me back up. Tallahassee alumni chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity uh, incorporated under the leadership of Reverend Micah Moore, who is the pole mark. What they have is two youth programs that are devoted to orienting and helping young men grow and develop their leadership skills uh, and their talents. And those two programs are the Tallahassee Kappa League and it's one of the oldest youth organizations in Tallahassee. It was chartered in 1972. And the, the component to that is the Guide Right Program. And as its name indicates, they, they devote their time to guiding our young men in the right direction. But what they have done I think is a great achievement this last year in the midst of COVID. Not only did they mentor young men, um, they found a way to engage young men in spite of COVID through Zoom and, and other activities. And at their end of year uh, organizational celebration, they awarded $21,000 in scholarships to graduating uh, seniors, high school students, and some college students at FAMU and at FSU. And these were private funds that they generated themselves. Um, the two programs that engage the youth, you know, it, it helps them channel their activities, uh, channel their their anger, and it also exposes them to various 
uh, career opportunities. So I just think that this organization and the men who are members of this organization should be applauded for all the efforts that they've devoted to uh, young men for this, especially this last year during COVID. And the other organization, um, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to commend is the Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated under the leadership of Dr. David Marion, who is the Grand Basilisk. They also have mentoring of youth. And what they have instituted is a youth step program. <laughs> and because of that step program, the youth have participated all over this country in youth uh, competitions. Most recently this summer, they were invited to participate um, in New Jersey as the representative of the state of Florida. And they have placed uh, in competitions in Florida, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida, in Tennessee, um, trying to see, that was Dallas, Georgia, um, and various places throughout this country this past year. And of course, the STEP programs that they have, it allows them to channel a lot of their extra energy into those, those STEP programs. They also have awarded uh, scholarships through their Omega Lamp Lighter uh, program, and they have exposed and assisted over 1,000 young men through the inception of, of this program. And of course, we know that especially our minority young men uh, in many instances are um, vulnerable during their teenage years, but they capture these young men and they, um, they mentor them and get them off the streets. And I just think they should be commended for their grassroots hard work. Both organizations, these grassroots organizations that, uh, should be commended, Mr. Chairman. Great, thank you so much, Commissioner Cummings. Any further comments? No, that's all I have. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to um, acknowledge, uh, starting right about now is the Child's High School graduation, um, which I have never missed in 14 years, and I'm missing this year, and, and, that, and that is unfortunate, but I wanted to send my thoughts to the, all of the graduates of 2021 who uh, are be, will be graduating this week. All across the community, uh, Leon County Schools will be at Cox Stadium. Um, I think sale was last night, Childs is tonight. Uh, the class of 2021 obviously faced some pretty unprecedented challenges in the last uh, year and a half. Their, their junior year getting cut in half and then their entire senior year getting um, affected by COVID. I mean, these young people didn't get their junior prom or their senior prom or a lot of the events that you would have your senior year. So I just wanted to say congratulations to all the graduates in our county. Um, I also wanted to recognize uh, one young lady at Childs High School, Catherine McCall, was recognized this week as being the Leon County School Student Volunteer of the Year. She raised $85,000. I know the politicians in us are going, whoa. $85,000 uh, for the Children's Miracle Network through our Dance Marathon program at Childs, which is real substantial and is doing a really good job. She won $8,000 scholarship, so I wanted to publicly shout her out. Um, I also wanted to say congrats to the Florida State softball team for giving me some things to watch at night, which is very exciting, which I think we got about <coughs> 30 minutes until uh, first pitch of game one of the championship series. Uh, also wanted to thank Rep Representative Al Lawson for hosting us, uh, several of us, on Memorial Day at uh, the Greenwood Cemetery for what was a really neat experience. I had the opportunity to take my family out there and, um, and, and talk to them about the meaning of Memorial Day. And I also went to um, the VFW Cemetery's event later in the day, and uh, I want to commend county staff for their involvement in both of those and, and the wreath laying that, that we provided there. Our Office of Veteran Services, I believe, is that what's called? Vince, thank you. 
And um, last but not least, I must acknowledge in the public domain that tomorrow is my oldest daughter's birthday, her 15th birthday. So I want to say happy birthday, Chloe Welch. She's a 100% chance she's not watching this. Um, uh, and then a week from now on the 17th is my middle daughter, Cameron's uh, 13th birthday. So I'll have two teenage girls in the house uh, in about nine days, 10 days, which is, uh, and the 15-year-old obviously will be getting her learner's permit uh, uh, on Thursday of this week. So we are scared to death, as, uh, as we talked about earlier, but uh, the lights of my life. So I wanted to say happy birthday to my girls, and that is all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Welch. Happy birthday, Chloe and Cameron. Um, I, can, I, can, I feel you, Commissioner Welch. Um, all right, next we've got uh, Commissioner Pro uh, Vice Chair Proctor. Vice Chair Proctor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, I wanted to uh, uh, pause here to reflect, uh, <coughs> to announce our community, if you've not already heard, but to amplify the sadness of uh, uh, family present, uh, Dr. Fred Humphreys is in hospice care. And um, that truly tears at the heart of, uh, of, of uh, our community and uh, ask uh, the prayers and support of uh, Leon County, uh, in interest of uh, President Humphreys and his family in this hour. Um, great leader, um, tremendous uh, visionary, um, a giant in head, heart, and spirit. And uh, certainly in this moment, we pray your prayers for uh, that great leader of our community. Um, commissioners, on July the 13th, we're scheduled for a 9 a.m. Uh, joint city workshop on homelessness. I wanted to ask if, uh, because we have also a potential back-to-back uh, -back of budget workshop, if necessary, and because we have placed that uh, 9 a.m. for a joint city homelessness uh, workshop that we had anticipated, if necessary, and I asked our county administrator moments ago, um, would today's vote have wrapped up? And it seems to be that we have uh, pretty much wrapped up. There are no questions to bring back uh, for that date. So I wanted to ask, in as much as we had slotted it, if, in fact, we could accept uh, an update uh, from Ms. Brenda Williams from Tallahassee Housing Authority, uh, that she might uh, give us an update on the continuing uh, the broadening good news that she continues to reap uh, on the Orange Avenue development. And I know that we're looking at homelessness, but while we're on housing, I would ask if the board would allow for uh, Orange Avenue development. And then finally, uh, on that same day, uh, since we're dealing with housing, last Sunday, not the day before yesterday, uh, newspaper local, uh, emphasize the difficulty of accessing um, new uh, constructed homes. And I think that um, Mr. Manasseh uh, was quoted as saying that only 10% of our market can engage uh, new home purchases in Tallahassee. And that was so powerful because I would ask if this commission would, would receive maybe from uh, the Tallahassee Realtors or uh, some experts who were quoted in that article that through their experience to tell us what is uh, going on and what can we do, if anything, to um, mm, help the market do better. I think that these topics of uh, home ownership in our community and the cost uh, probably would benefit the ears of both city and county commission. And I think that um, the city commission, uh, as well as the county commission, could also be uh, uh, enlightened uh, from Brenda Williams and what is occurring over on the Orange Avenue uh, area of the Tallahassee Housing Development Project. So those are the two um, areas that I ask if you would please augment, and that 
we not deal with the budget workshop, but we look at those two different housing components for that morning. Michigan Administrator. Just to confirm, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, what Commissioner Proctor said, yes, based on your actions tonight, we don't believe that we would need the July 13th budget workshop. And uh, if it's the direction of the board, um, which it would be helpful if we got a motion to that effect, um, to add uh, whatever presentations you'd like to the homelessness workshop, we would do that, but it would need to be based on the direction of the board. Well, if I might, Mr. Chairman, with that from the Administrator, I'd like to make the motion that instead of budget workshop on the 13th that we look at two additional housing issues including the uh, 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 new home construction and affordability and the update on the Orange Avenue development from the Tallahassee Housing Authority. Motion. I'll, I'll second that. And that, that. That would be a part of the workshop, the morning workshop? Um, not necessarily integrated, but <clears throat> they are unique components of housing. Not the same thing. Yes. To try to, try to help facilitate, um, given that it was would not be a component of the workshop um, on that day, um, we do have a commission meeting that night. And if it was the board's direction, we'd be happy to put those on as a presentation from, for example, the, the Tallahassee Housing Authority, if that was the direction <laughs> of the board. Or if the board wanted to have a separate workshop on that same day, if that's where Commissioner Proctor was going with that, then we would need that direction as well. What's your preference, Vice Chair? Commissioners, I, I think to split it up, we could put the Tallahassee Housing in the commission meeting at 3 o'clock that day. And I think that it's a discussion item on 90% of our market is locked out of affording new homes. That's a deeper dive. It's uh, it's something I think that warrants uh, workshopping. And if we could do it that morning, um, I mean, it is a fact of homelessness, except that we don't characterize the dynamics associated with homelessness uh, in the same way that we do the lockout that's occurring with <coughs> affordability and people who qualify to buy new homes in our community. So I like to see the new home construction issue that was featured on the front page by uh, Tomorrow Waters as a part of that workshop. And then the, uh, Brenda Williams made the afternoon her presentation. Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. I mean, ideally, having those two items in the joint workshop with the city, would, in my opinion, might be the best approach. But I don't, we, we can't do that you know, right, unilaterally without the city's approval. But I think the county administrator might have an idea. Is that right? No, I was, I was going to make the same observation, uh, just that we obviously we couldn't do it unilaterally. The, the issue, now that I understand it better, that Commissioner Proctor was articulating about the workshop, um, uh, it would just, if it was going to be July 13th, it really just wouldn't give us adequate time to present, uh, mm -hmm. to provide you all with the analysis on that, uh, um, for that workshop. Uh, just something to consider. Well, could we allow the so-called experts and not so much that our staff has to prepare because they're not realtors but for the realtor community to come and sit at this table and dissect the dynamics of what is why is 90 percent of our market locked out from um, housing that's it 90 percent it sounds like a crisis so I'm, i mean that was more like a presentation but our staff facilitating those persons who would come to um, present to us as the experts in the area. It could be bankers, it could be the realtors, brokers, or whoever the professionals are. I know for, um, I have heard one factor, uh, uh, we've done this many years ago, uh, permitting. And uh, one of the factors which may have come out in that article was the length of time with which it takes to get a building permit in our community and how much red tape uh, in securing uh, permission to build. Uh, and as we see uh, the 2,300 mm type square foot home, those are, those are being built outside of Leon County. Uh, we're, we're dealing with the upper market, 4,000 and up. That's what's happening here. But the real um, typical 2,300, 2,500 square foot home 
that's outside of our county. We need to we need to capture that market. Yep. Vice Chair Proctor, would, would you allow me to make a suggestion? Yes, sir. Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we just entertain this for a second, please? Why don't we ask the uh, through your motion, ask the county administrator to work with the city manager to see if some component between uh, for the the joint workshop includes the topics that you talked about. Sure. Maybe not in depth, but at least starting to introduce those topics. Sure. If that is not something that the city commission or the city manager would agree to or, or be able to work with on the county administrator, we then ask the county administrator to put that on on an upcoming agenda item for a county commission meeting. Excellent. I receive all of what you just said. And, all right. So uh, I'll second that motion, uh, Mr. Sure. Vice Chair. Right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion as, as made by uh, Vice Chair Proctor, seconded by myself, say aye. No. Aye. Okay. Mr. Sure. Dozier, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I was waiting until you all finished on this. Okay. Um, let's, try to, let's try to keep it brief. We'll, we'll try to wrap things up, but uh, take your time. You know, to, I just want to make sure we don't want to try to keep things moving. Go ahead. I, I fully understand that, Mr. Chair, and um, the three of you had a long conversation about this, so I was trying to wait to the end. I appreciate you trying to negotiate this, but I can't support the motion, Commissioner Proctor. Um, I think we will have so much information, if I'm not mistaken, the meeting, the, um, Mr. County Administrator, help me with this. Our workshop is two hours long. Is that how much we budgeted? Maybe three? I'm pulling up the calendar. It, it was, we anticipated two, but obviously it's starting at nine, so the anticipation was two. Okay, so we've anticipated two hours. We've been waiting for months to talk about homelessness and other issues. Um, yes, housing is a component, prevention is a component, and the, I, I would hope the Orange Avenue apartments are part of this mix. I mean, that, that's a critical piece of this puzzle for prevention and giving us um, housing that folks can aff afford who are in danger or are, in fact, homeless. So I, I would hope that would be a part of this. The cost for housing, I, I think we're trying to address that through the land trust, TLC, other issues like that with affordable housing. It is a huge, enormous issue, important, but I cannot support mixing it up with that workshop unless we were going to extend the workshop two more hours. Um, and I don't think we're going to get agreement from the city, our city colleagues to, to do that, and we have a commission meeting that day. So respectfully, I could support this coming back as a presentation, as an agenda item, as an additional workshop. But Commissioner Proctor, you know, I mean, we would take the whole two hours for just presentation, and we've got some heavy lift to do with discussing the allocation of American Rescue Funds and other things like that on that day. So I don't want to jeopardize the good work we could do by adding another really important issue to it. <coughs> Commissioner thank Dozier, thank you very much. You raise a good point. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I think two hours for a workshop on uh, on homelessness uh, and affordable housing is is far too short. Um, and so, I mean, I, I agree with uh, uh, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I also think that Vice Chair Proctor's subject matter. I mean, the two topics are, are important. We should hear from them. Um, I don't know, Vice Chair Proctor. It's, it's you're the maker of the motion. Uh, we could, in, in, in addition to the county administrator approaching the city manager, we could ask. The county administrator to ask the city manager to extend the time of the workshop. To me, well, that seems I thought, like I thought your idea was good, and I know that Commissioner Dozier thinks for our entire board, and um, I get that. But um, my thoughts, I laid them out. I've made a motion, and I, her thoughts are independent, and they're hers. But um, what I've said I, is what I have said. So the, the commission, I'm comfortable. I've been voted down many times on this day, and if you're not receiving of that, I was looking at the schedule in terms of between now and September and July, is, um, and we're talking about housing, in our budget workshop, we're omitting and not having. So I saw the space available. Uh, we don't have many times to get together, and the topic is hot. But... Um, we try to do and work with the bits and pieces that we're given. The only time that I saw on schedule to, to, to reach this point of a workshop is July, the uh, whatever date that was, 13th. 13th. All right. So, I'm, I mean, I'm cool if the commission don't want to talk about it. I mean, I am okay. Uh, but those you don't speak for the whole board, though. 
I think she thinks she does. All right, well, let's, let's, let's just keep uh, things civil here. Commissioner Maddox, next, sir. Got a question. You're the last speaker anyway. So uh, all those in favor of the motion as stated by Vice Chair Proctor and seconded by myself, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the motion carries 5-1 uh, with Commissioner Dozier in dissent and um, Commissioner Jackson out of chambers. Anything else, Vice Chair Proctor? Chairman, I want to thank our community for the um, manner in which our community has gone through the past year. Uh, our community has responded well, and I want to thank our community for listening ears uh, to COVID, to mask, uh, and every manner in which we've asked workers to cooperate with um, remaining at home and, and distancing. I'm very proud of our community. Uh, the commercials, the leadership of your voice and other commissioners, uh, television commercials, uh, admonishing our community uh, has been a great observation to see how well we've blended and reacted and respected each other and I'm very very grateful. I want to encourage members of the South Side, my citizens of my district, that their challenges and our families have been affected. and We've had losses and there have been funerals that many of us have gone to particularly for those who have been the victims of COVID. But I want to encourage the citizens to uh, remain hopeful, uh, to not be of despair, and to keep reaching, and to allow your best selves to shine, and to stand, and to represent who you are. Uh, and if there is a need for me, uh, our county commission, we continue to be um, available and accessible uh, to our community. And in particular, um, these struggles, people begin to get weary and hopeless. But if you're feeling in a certain kind of way, uh, please know that you may call me um, and I'll listen and we will try to do our best um, in these difficult times. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. Good night. Thank you, Vice Chair Proctor. I think I'm the last one to speak. I'll be very quick. Uh, two things. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd like to request the board uh, <clears throat> make a motion for a proclamation recognizing uh, World Sickle Cell Day, uh, which is June 19th. Second. Thank you. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Maddox. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously, 6 0 with Commissioner Jackson out of chambers. Um, and just one, I think, I'm sure you all have heard about it, but uh, Lake Jackson right now is experiencing a dry down which is a natural occurrence, but it's pretty rare. It's happened um, about nine times in the last 200 years. Last time was in 2012. Um, it's a pretty interesting, uh, uh, we went this morning to take a look at it with uh, someone, uh, a neighbor, um, an environmentalist kind of showing us around, and it's really amazing. So if you get a chance, um, sometime in the next few weeks, put on your rubber boots and head out there and, and just take a look around. It's fascinating. Um, we, I'm hoping to coordinate with FDEP and others um, some um, lake bed litter cleanups in the next few weeks. So if you're interested in joining us, uh, we don't have any dates set, but uh, very much like to have everybody out there, if, if you can, if, you, if you're interested, to come out and join us and clean up the lake bed while we can. Um, sometime in the next couple months, maybe might even be a year or more, I mean, the lake will fill up as we have more rain events coming through, tropical storms and such. Uh, but now's our time to kind of clean it up. Um, uh, easily. But it's really fascinating. If you get a chance, come out and check it out because it doesn't happen very often. And that uh, concludes my comments. Is there a move to a motion to adjourn? And a second? All right. All in favor? Thank you all very much. Have a great evening.